We are the head coach of the New England Patriots, and we're using modded Madden to rebuild the Patriots dynasty. With modded gameplay, a realistic trading experience, and more integration than ever before, in this episode, we're battling for the top spot in the AFC East. So make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy, and if you want to see more episodes, and let's jump right into it. So before we jump into the games, we have to see where we are. NFL Power Rankings puts us at the 7th ranked team, but then again, looking at it, I think we're top in the AFC and we are, so this they're saying that this is very lopsided right now. Yeah, all these here NFC teams, except for the Jags, they're saying they're above us, even though they have three losses on this season. Offensive power ranking sitting at number nine. I'll take that all day long. Fourth ranked defense. And with the addition of Brian Burns, hopefully we can jump up to that number one spot. The Bills are in front of us, though. After Bo Nix threw for four touchdowns on them, come on, I'm not buying it. But going into this episode, we're going to be without Marvin Harrison for the first week. CJ Garner-Johnson may not even make an appearance in this episode. Same with Kevin Dodson. So those are some big things we need to know. I did move around our offensive line a little bit. Cole Strange back to being a starter for us. So our offensive line took a big hit there. But with Harrison gone as well, expect some of our other receivers to get some reps. Darius Tony is going to be a big asset to us. Demario Douglas, Justin Ross, though, Brandon Rice, and Julie. And Fleming, all those guys may get some more action. But looking comparatively at the whole league on where we stand right now, you see it AFC East first place. It's such a good feeling there. But the rest of the league shaping up to be pretty competitive, a little bit lopsided in the AFC. Besides the AFC North, we know that's always going to be competitive there. The other side, Jaden Daniels has led the Commanders to be seven and two so far. Good rebound from the Packers and the Lions. Both of them struggled last year. The Bears, defending Super Bowl champion Bears sitting in third over there in the NFC North. And the NFC South, very competitive, but we are facing the Carolina Panthers today. And their quarterback is not Bryce Young. I've alluded to it last episode, but it actually is going to be Tua Tungavailoa. You see it over here, seven touchdowns, eight interceptions. A lot of the quarterbacks have struggled so far this year. It's not me. It's not just Bo Nix. A lot of the quarterbacks have struggled. Nicky Kwan, who's going to be out today. He was on the trade block, thought about getting him. Solly was injured, and I'm like, I'm not sure if I want that because he struggled injuries throughout his entire career so far. But the Panthers receiving core also pretty banged up. You take a look at it here. They did go out and get Amari Cooper and Curtis Samuel, both though aging receivers. So they're not the receivers they once were. They did go get Quez Watkins, LaVisca Chenault still there, Terrence Marshall. So not a very solid team across the board. 80 overall offense. Defensively, though, we took Brian Burns from him. We gave him Mapu. And Denzel Burke. So, hey, those are some replacement guys. We're facing former Patriots today. But this team is rough. Only a 77. One of the worst rated defenses in the league. Somehow their defensive ranking, though, is number eight. So maybe we're missing something that we're not quite seeing. You see Derek Brown not on the team anymore. But hopefully we can take advantage of that. One of the things they do have, though, is one of the best developed running backs in the entire league. Drafted, not this past season, but the season before that, Rasheen Ali out of Marshall, turned out to be a 77 overall, was drafted, he was a 63, jumped up to a 77, and had a very good rookie year. That was over with Denver because he was an undrafted free agent, so he only took that one-year deal, then came over to Carolina, has been their starting running back. Cody Schrader also there, so another one-year guy. He developed pretty well, too. He's up to a 75, I didn't even realize. They're not the best team, but I want to take a look at some of our stats. Bo Nix, 12 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Running the ball-wise, expect Donovan Edwards to get more carries today. It's as simple as that. I'm not sure how I'm going to work it out, but I want Donovan Edwards to run the ball more. We saw it in that last game. I'll go over and show you. In week number nine, finished with 63 yards on the ground. His best performance so far, averaging seven yards per carry because Blake Horm hasn't been doing that great for us. I'll be completely honest. He's having good moments. He's also having bad moments, but all of our guys here are getting involved and receiving wise to Mario Douglas still leading the way. Darius Slayton in there at wide receiver three with 461, but it really is those three leading the way and we just haven't gotten the tight ends involved. Hunter Henry still going to be benched in for Jake Bringstool, who's not number 12 anymore. I do have to say that I did put him at number 12 and I didn't even realize, didn't even put it together. I feel like a terrible NFL fan for that. In case you want to look at our depth chart one more time before we really dump all of our focus into the Panthers game, here's our offense right here. Offensive line looking solid, even with Kevin Dotson out. And then defensively, our first round draft pick, Abdul Carter, playing pretty well for us. And then defensively, a lot of focus on this front line. If you remember, we switched to a 46 defense. So it allows a little bit more freedom inside the box. And this is what we're looking like now. I did also change the Kobe Dean's number back to his 17 at Georgia. 
giving Brian Burns number zero, but our secondary, Kobe Bryant, leading the way with us with interceptions with four on this season in his first, like, five games for us starting after rookie. He did get injured in preseason, came back in. Javon Ballard is going to get the start today with C.J. Gardner-Johnson out. But looking, we are actually favored in this one. Carolina giving plus two here. Third down conversions. We are dominating that statistical category this year, first in the league and for fourth down conversions, which is a complete role reversal of last year, but red zone efficiency, the Panthers sitting only at 18.5% and the turnover differential for us is continuing to be really solid. I think it's still crazy that I feel like we get like two interceptions a game, but looking at takeaways, we're still only ranked 17th in the league. That's how bad it's been so far this year. Look at the interception numbers from quarterbacks. Anthony Richardson already up to 17 with only four touchdown passes. I've never seen that before. And then Justin Herbert, eight touchdowns, 14 picks. Kirk Cousins, 10-14, eight 13 from Justin Fields. Thank goodness we got rid of him, but it's just been a wild, wild season. Look at interception numbers. Actually, Bo Nix down here at number 15 now. So, I, you know, it's not been the greatest, but it's still better than most in the league right now. Only a few quarterbacks down here actually having success, that being Cam Ward. Desmond Ritter, who is starting because Shador Sanders got injured. Kenny Pickett, that's wild to me. But then Jared Goff cooking up for the Lions. But shifting the focus back down now, I do want to stop the deep pass today, too. I don't want him going over the top. I think we will get some interceptions today if they do choose to do that. And with J.C. Horn really only being the staple of their secondary... In the middle, they're not that good, especially with Derrick Brown gone from the roster. I think we can really take advantage of that, and I want to try to run on them heavy today. Now, we know any injury bug has swept the NFL. There's a ton of injuries across the board. Hopefully, we are all good. We're still without some of our superstars today. And Ryan Kelly is going to be down in this game with turf toes. So that's going to suck. That should only be a one-week injury. But that does mean that Ezra Cleveland is going to have to get the start today. That's fine. And with this immovable object task, I think I just pronounced that so wrong. We want to have success in the run. Donovan Edwards, Blake Corum. Even Frank Gore Jr. as a third down back, if we don't have success with those three combination of players, that's where I'm really going to lose faith in our offensive line. Now, yes, injuries, obviously, but still, I think we can definitely, definitely run the rock. But the other awesome thing about this game is this going to be the first time really that we see Justin Matabuke, Brian Burns, Barrymore, and Judon all together on that defensive line. If that, if that works out, four-man pressure's getting it. The ability to put pressure on the quarterback, let the rest of our secondary drop, could cause more interceptions to happen, but at the same time, could really work in our favor against the run, which we're already a top run defense in the league. So can we add to that even more? As the true second half of the season, it kicks off right now. Frank Gore Jr. on the return. We haven't got any return touchdowns with him yet so far this year. And he did have two or three last season, including, I think, two in a game. So hopefully the spark's not gone there. But Bo Nix comes out after some great showings and some not great showings last episode. I'd love to try to continue his success and really use our big three at receiving core to have some move momentum. But you see there is another number change there. Blake Corn back to his Michigan number at two. And him starting on the ground today early. We opened up a run for eight, which is huge. But just like that, we sub him out already. Frank Gore Jr. in this time. HB base. Can we get it running up the middle? And we do get it for the first down. Because I'm just going to try to dare this Panthers team to stop me on this first drive. If we just keep opening it up, that's another gain of six. It's such a good feeling when you can start off the run game hot here now about a counter play that time it just doesn't work all right so a little overzealous on the run to start and the worst is that was mapu making the tackle there so we're just going to scramble out go quick to bring stool and brings will get the first down rocking number 88 now instead of 12 now edwards is going to check in and i wanted to use kyle use check a little bit more as a blocking tight end as well as he does his job here as edwards rocking the new number seven is going to start with an eight yard carry himself last week we know he rushed really well 63 yards to his name but i think the number seven change looks so freaking crisp there because i'm just so excited with how this offense has started here today as blake Horm won once again, off to the races. Juke moving to the inside, and we're already working our way down the field. If we're going to win games without Bo Nix having to throw the football, first off, that'd be a first because I feel like right now, at least since the Jaguars game of last season, if you watched all the way back in episode number four or five, I believe, after that Jaguars game, the running game for us was just downhill. Our offensive line struggled more. But then also, a lot of the games we were playing from behind as the cutback lane does open up. Edwards running here all the way up for another first down. We're going right at Mapu. The guy we traded away we're going right at him on this opening drive let's just make sure we can pick up this first down here frank Gore, i see the hole open up juke move almost working but all of our running backs having success now read option though and it is going to be a give 
And it is going to be another run up the middle with Edwards. I like his bigger frame. I think he can fall forward. I felt like he's been falling forward more than what we've gotten from some of our other guys. But we know our injuries to our offensive line today, yet we're running the ball so well to open up. As we are going to try an inside zone split here just one more time. Continue to try to pound this rock. And finally, they do come up and meet us. So it is a third and six. And I really feel like ending this drive not with a touchdown would be a huge Huge loss here for what we showed going down, but Frank Gore Jr. to the outside. He's going to be open, and all of our running backs, all of our running backs having success, getting us down the field. We got a catch from Frank Gore Jr., plus 11 yards rushing, 22 from Donovan Edwards, and 35, something like that. I didn't need to actually verify that number. From Blake Corum is absolutely insane. We even had that kind of success from our running backs in a long time, but against one of the worst defenses in the league, Maybe this is how we can make it happen. I guess all good things come in threes for us. Our running back core, our receiving core with Douglas Slayton and Harrison, our DB core with Marcus Jones, as well as Christian Gonzalez and Kobe Bryant. Well, not working right there as Christian Gonzalez missed that tackle. But all good things for us right now are coming in threes. Hopefully that'll help us put some more points up on the board. But Tua Tagovailoa still keeps his superstar rating, which is kind of insane here as Ali with the first carry, not getting much. I'm still really just excited to really experiment with this 46 defense. More 4-3 looks because of Brian Burns. You see him there rocking the new number zero. As they go quick to the outside, actually catch us open. But that is Curtis Samuel just missing the catch. Hey, Gonzalez, relax on the celebrating there because I don't think that was great coverage. But already locked into a third down now. Carter and Baker in the middle. Can we get them off the field early? We had a very long extended drive here. They're not getting the same kind of success as they go out. And please just make the tackle. And we do. So right around midfield, we're going to force the Panthers to punt. They are going to try to pin us deep here. But we do have Jones back returning one more time. We haven't got any big punt returns and we won't get one right here starting at around the 10 yard line and we're going to go right back to the ground right away if it's not working why make an effort to change it but i do want to mix in a little bit more pass on this drive just get things rolling here's the big tight end does get open across the middle we just hit him as he does get stuck up on the linebackers so this is where we really need darius slayton to step up we know last week didn't do a lot against the miami dolphins because one-on-one with jalen ramsey that's a tough ask but he does make this catch for the first down so things so far really starting clean here now this is where i am going to check to the play action because they are stacking the box seven in the box we don't have enough blockers for it as i am going to roll out and i'm just going to try to hit it underneath just stop there Kadarius tony that does work Juke move not coming out, but that's another big gain. We're continuing just to find success early. It's really our whole team is just coming together. And you see, they're just committed to this run. As we just should have Quorum leaking out, but the sack comes in from Mapu. Congratulations. Find your success in a Carolina Panthers uniform. Obviously, didn't quite get it with us. So we are backed up into a second and 19. I'm going to send Slayton actually on a hitch route. Just to hitch up on it as we do get him wide open, actually. And that's going to make third down a lot more manageable for us. Because I could have tried to take a deep shot there. But if it didn't quite work, would have been a lot worse on third down. But that is the end of the first quarter. So far, domination. I haven't had a game like this in a long time. We're starting off so hot on offense. Things just working our way. Our only bad play is a counter that didn't quite work. And an incompletion where a guy got stuck up on a crosser. But on this third and six, we need to get to the sticks. Try to get it out. We just a late, late trying to get the ball out. So the third mistake, you can add that one to the books today. As we will punt this ball away. And asked me to take a 61 yarder, but that's definitely not happening here. As we do just put this one in the end zone, I should have I kicked it just a little bit more. So not the best punt coming out, but now it looks like they're fully committed to the run here. Oh, never mind. Check out of it right away. We do have Bullard coming on blitz. I'm actually going to hang with the running back instead, though, as he's going to leak out. As they do throw it right underneath, we're there with Javon Bullard, but we missed the tackle. Ali out to the races, and that's what he offers coming out of Marshall. His break tackle rating super high for an undrafted running back, and he did develop like crazy already up to a 77. The progression in this franchise, a little bit different than what you've seen. We talked about in the beginning. In the introduction, Modern Madden, bit different. Hey, but there's Brian Burns making plays for us against his former team and that's gonna be a lot of contention because do we re-sign him obviously the answer should be yes but how much is he gonna pull out of our wallet 17 million dollars is probably gonna be what his price tag is as Amari Cooper does fall forward for the first down while we're right now 
negative 15 mil in cap, a little bit over the cap hit. We spent a lot of money this offseason, a lot of moves. We're going to have to make some major changes, including trades, just to clear some money off the tables for us. So a little bit worrisome is out to the outside. Good knockdown on that one. Because I don't know why we're not running more man-to-man. -man. I feel like man-to-man -man against this team should be very easy, as that should be an interception. Christian Gonzalez, we're not, we're not starting this again. We are not starting. Last season, we all know, everybody knows, we could not get an interception to save our life. We dropped, I think somebody did count and DM'd me. It was like 13 interceptions we did drop last season. And so I cannot be having that continue today as it is a third and 10. As it's quick across and the tight end got open. Noah Gray out to the races. We need to be able to chase him down and we do. I thought the pressure was going to get there. The line shift looked a little weird, but they do get the first down out of it. So now the Panthers really making moves here. Run up the middle. N'Kobe Dean wearing a 17 jersey now, making the tackle, or at least trying to. Justin Matabuke was there to clean up. So I do want to at least hold him to a field goal here. Ben, but don't break. We know the red zone efficiency is bad, so I just want to continue to take advantage of that as we do clear out. But they do get another good run. That time, Schrader coming in. I thought we had a perfect opportunity there with Jerome Baker, but I just over-pursued it a little bit. So on this third and one will they go to a run it looks like they do up the middle ollie breaking it to the outside brian burns though enough to bring him down to prevent a huge gain still a solid gain though and they do pick up the first i want to see burns get some interception or sack i'm sorry scratch I want to see Burns get a sack here, but this time definitely not going to do it when it's a screenplay to the outside as we're trying to track all the way across the field with Jones or Real Peppers cleans it up. But I don't actually know Brian Burns' sack total so far, not just as a New England Patriot because he only played one game for us so far, but just as a Carolina Panther in general because I feel like in our system, he could definitely have some success. Ali up the middle does maybe get stuffed there. Nope, they're going to give it to him first and goal. But if we want to win games today, Javon Bullard is going to be a big key for us that's going to need to step up as they do run it up the middle. Baker's there and we're there as well, which real but because cj garner johnson's out it puts a little bit more strain onto our secondary bullard obviously 70 overall very light there not the best in the world but he has made some good plays for us and that's why he's going to be starting over melo fonwu as you saw in the buccaneers game melo fonwu just struggled as we're out the outside again bottling up a run but that pass over the top and brandon cooks did grab in that buccaneers game was led up by melo fonwu so i'm not just sold on him i just think he's a solid backup but we've had good plays come out from some of our other guys it's out to the outside it is is a touchdown grab by Amari Cooper. Christian Gonzalez in coverage, kind of losing the one-on-one -on -one battle. Could have had that interception, though, but the Panthers do put up a score and tie the game. So the idea of domination, may, we may have to hold on to that one just a little bit more. And if you made it this far, I'll remind you again, hey, like, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for the support, like, on these videos. Um, It has been so awesome so far. Just have some of your feedback on the videos. It's been such a blessing. Now that the soft things are out of the way, let's get back to it. Running the ball with Blake Corum. Can we do it here? Linebacker should be free, but if he gets sucked up, we should have a hole here. And we do just enough getting up for six. Corum starting off very, very nice. Almost 40 yards on the ground. With Blake being tired, I want to go to our screenplay here to Kadarius Tony. We've had some success with it in the past as we do again outside. Can we get a good juke move to come out? It is in Kadarius Tony making up for Marvin Harrison Jr. not being there. I know that screen spot is usually where we have Slayton. But I move Slayton to the inside because he's a better blocker in that aspect. Gary Slayton, a very underrated run blocker and impact blocker in general. But Kadarius Tony able to make the catch and... He's good in open space. We all know he's got one of the best juke moves. We're trying to revitalize his career. And so giving him opportunities like that is huge. But Donovan Edwards does check in on the run. A trap play underneath. And it is bottled up pretty heavy. I saw a little bit of a hole there. Or maybe to the right side I missed. But another drive where things are just grinding down the field. Is we're going to go out actually to the running back here. And if we can get a good block from Justin Ross. We'll be able to pick up the first down. And we almost do. But the two minute warning is here. So we're going to have to go to the air a little bit more. We still have all of our timeouts. We can kind of use them as we see fit. It. Starting out, I do want to do a play action. As long as the pressure is solid, we're going to try to dump this one off. I just need to throw this one away. Fourth and inches. We are going to go for this. But I saw the pressure in our face right away. But up the middle, it's going to be Frank Gore getting enough for it. So now that that's over with, we can go back to the air. No worries. Slayton actually checking out on this play. Kind of makes me a little bit mad. But at quick out to the outside, we do miss the throw to Tony. But not a bad start in general from our team. And this is something that excites me. Edwards definitely stay in the pass block on this one. Slayton one-on-one -on -one with his speed. Could get open here as we just try to throw it up and we miss. Are you kidding me? We didn't pick up the edge rusher. That would have been a touchdown. Had touchdown written all over it. And so we're going to have to try to do everything in our power to pick this one up. Quick to the outside. And it's Brendan Rice making the grab and getting out of bounds. Son of Jerry Rice. 
We drafted him last season, dropped him down to our practice squad. Bucks picked him up, played decent with the Bucks a couple games here and there, but did hit free agency and we brought him back this season. Way to come in and make a play. And he actually didn't get out of bounds. So this is going to suck here, but out to the outside. We need Slayton to win this jump ball and he doesn't. And I want to at least get in a field goal range. So we are going to actually run the ball here with Frank Gore as we juke around and he's got a lot of space and this is where we're going to burn a timeout. But there is a penalty marker. If this is on Justin Ross, I'm going to lose my mind. I thought I saw a hold of the outside and it is going to be on Justin Ross. Okay, well, call me a wizard because I called it, but call me annoyed if you want to call me anything at this point because I cannot believe that holding calls have still been a big issue for us as we're going to try to hit this one in this seam, jump up with Bringstool, not able to bring it in. So we're going back to that play that worked for Slayton on this third down. Can we get it to work? As I, I do see him crossing or if we're able to hit it, that's huge. And it is not caught. Darius Tony. Okay, I love you as a player you're fun to watch you drop more balls than anybody i've ever seen this is why you're struggling in the nfl that's why my new york giants decided to hippity hoppity and get off that property with that draft pick there but joey sly is going to have to set up for a very very long field goal will it be good it's going to fall a little bit short and hit the pylon Kadarius tony i cannot believe you dropped that this trying not to make rap jokes trying not to make jokes about his rapping abilities but i i digress we move on because with 42 seconds guess who's got great field position the Carolina Panthers. Yay. Jerome Baker in the middle, though. We got to get back to make a stop. We know they're going to go do some quick passes out to the outside. Good breakup opportunity. And that is Kobe Bryant making the play. He continues to just ball out for us. I think he could definitely still continue to develop even more. Drafted at a 71 overall, already up to a 77, which is huge. As we're just going to continue as they go underneath. And that's a, almost a good play. Brian Burns does clean it up, though, along with us. Is can we please just tackle him? We're just afraid to make a tackle here. What? The hip drop didn't get banned in this universe. Let's please just make a tackle. Nice and easy. Third and nine. So they're going to probably go out to the running back. Instead, you're going to take a massive deep shot underneath. Can we please get the interception? And we do. And who else but Javon Bullard making the play to a really trying to force something there. Are we going to force anything more? No. We're going to be nice and easy. We're going to take this to halftime. End it right there. Great interception by Javon Bowler. Great pressure from our defense. Who was there? Looks like that was Abdul Carter, but an absolute quack, quack duck going up. Good job readjusting there to get the pick. So Frank Gore on the first run. Let's see how he does here. Nice and easy. Just pick up a couple yards. Have a little bit of patience. And we see, we'll try to squeeze through the hole. Doesn't quite work, but that's going to be it. We're going to take it to halftime. 7 7 your score, a little bit lower than what I wanted. So coming out of the tunnel, I want to be able to throw the ball a little bit more. You see the rates there, just not good. Bo Nix, not having the best game in the world, but our running game, though, is working. So that's where I feel a little bit more comfortable in making decisions. Even Tua, though, his ratings, not as good. They are starting with the ball. So here we go. Carolina Panthers going to come back out on offense. This ball out of the back of the end zone. Starting out on defense. We're going to go man to man. They're going to go run with Ali. We're scraping across. Good job by Abdul Carter coming there. As I did read some stuff that Penn State's really thinking about turning him into a Micah Parsons edge rusher that we see with him now in Dallas. So maybe we try to incorporate that more into our team. But I think our edge guys are just so unbelievably solid that it's not my biggest concern in the world. Here is almost a catch there by Curtis Samuel. His second and drop of the day. But Abdul Carter switching to edge is not my biggest concern. I like him being able to kind of play everywhere. Yeah, he's going to come on the blitzes, but I think that just using him as a middle linebacker type is huge as we're not able to get the sack. It's dumped off instead. Jerome Baker makes a solid tackle though. So it is going to force a punt. But this is the second time today that we've gotten the opportunity to get a sack, not able to convert. The pressure is still getting there on two, and I think that's what I value more than just the sack itself. The ability to get pressure on a quarterback with four guys because these quarterbacks will pick us apart. You know how that works in Madden. But in total, looking at modded Madden, that's also the case. The quarterback's pressure that he gets on him has a huge impact on his accuracy. And that's how we're going to get things to go our way, such as the interception earlier. Blitz coming off this right-hand side. I'm going to pitch into it anyway, because hopefully they kind of crash down on it instead. As the pitch to the outside is going to open up, and it is going to get enough. That's a huge run by Edwards who started off here, spinning off the tackle, getting enough for the first. As I don't know if I said it quite yet, but that is Cooper DeGene out there at corner. The Iowa product was selected by the Carolina Panthers way back in the offseason episode for that season. And he actually did ball out in his first couple of starts, had two interceptions through the first four games. I've been following all the rookies just to be able to talk about him in episodes, but just to see what they were doing. But Cooper DeGene did have some success as a run here with Bo Nix, and we're just going to try to truck forward, just get a little bit as we do manage to just get a yard. I'm glad he is fumbling, has just been non-existent. I didn't tweak anything, 
but he just hasn't fumbled the ball. I'm sure every time you see him go down, you're like screaming at me to maybe hit that slide button. We're not. We're going to be able to truck forward a little bit. But on third and five, we do have to fight for this first down as I'm going to throw it quick in that window. And Demario Douglas, way to hold on to it. Looking dead there on the ground, but he does hold on to it. Get up point for the first. So just such a good job by our offense being consistent. I feel like we've gotten close to around the midfield so many different times as Donovan Edwards just continues to spin off and make good runs. He's got eight carries today. I don't know how many Blake Corum has. I think Corum has 46-ish yards on the day. Now, here's the thing. If I switch this to the backside, as long as we can go man-on-man -man here, we should maybe have a just of the safety to beat as we do. But the safety comes downhill hard right away. I was hoping maybe he flew out, but that is going to be Elliott. Good play by Elliott because this year we have taken advantage of that stretch play to the weak side a lot. It works. It opens up if the safety doesn't crash it down hard. But on this third and seven, we got to throw quick to the marker. Cooper DeGene in coverage. But could that be a pass interference? Could that be a pass interference? And it is. So finally, we get a penalty to go our way. The second year man out of Iowa gets called for it. And I just love a fresh set of downs. And with that, I am going to take a shot to the end zone as we're going to try to hit it quick in the seam as it is going to be caught by Bringstool. He was one on one with not a linebacker. I think that was actually a right end that ended up being man on man with him. So that did just work out our way. So now down to an RPO reaction option. Look, Bo Nix is going to bite and we're just going to run this one. We're going to run with Bo. Can we get to the edge? We cannot get to the edge. Good job there by Sanborn chasing us down. That's a perfect. We've had Bo Nix get a couple of rushing touchdowns that way. So the Panthers all over it. And maybe I'm stupid here because I don't want to get away from the run. It's been our bread and butter so far. So we're going to try to, oh, maybe we shouldn't run the football. Ezra Cleveland gets absolutely burned there by sweat. So maybe I eat my words a little bit on that one. So third and goal. We got to be able to put this in as I'm going to try to throw it. And we just get pressure in our face right away. So after such another good drive, getting our way down the field, we're not able to put it in. Joey Sly is going to come in to attempt a field goal. This one a little bit easier than the 60 or 57 yarder that he did attempt earlier in the game. I'll take it. We got our points on the board and we do just take the lead in the ball game. Dolphins picked up actually a huge win against the Steelers down there at the bottom of the screen. If you see it, Keon Coleman, former Giants franchise legend. If you do know, balling out down there. But I think defensively, there's not a lot I do want to change. I think our linebacking core is playing very well in this game, even with some of the movement. Doing very good against Ali as a run up the middle gets absolutely stopped. This time, Judon doing it. But as long as we ask our corners just to cover for, hey, one to three seconds, we should be fine. Anything longer than that is when we're definitely going to get burned, as they're going to throw here in this seam. And this is Kobe Bryant getting burned by Curtis Samuel. So maybe cover for a little bit longer, maybe be a little bit more consistent as that is a huge score here for the Panthers, a one hitter as he had two drops earlier in the game today. But after that one, just completely opens it up. Was not expecting the play to go like that. Carolina now takes the lead at 14 to 10 in this one. Just like that, after our long, grindy drives, we are back out on offense. This poor Panthers defense has had no break all game. As let's try to get a good return here up the middle. No, absolutely not. The exact opposite of that happened. And I think actually in total today, we're averaging more than five yards per carry on the ground, starting out here with a stretch play, as it's just bad blocking from our receiving core. Kadarius Tony's not the best run blocker in the world. I wish I could kind of manage that a little bit better, but maybe we're going to have to rely on the passing game just a bit more to help us open up things here. As pressure coming up right around the middle, as I'm going to try to scramble around, just throw this one away. There was nothing open up. Demario Douglas got jammed. Slayton got jammed. As things really just look so unbelievably different when Harrison's not here in the passing game. Bo Nix does not look as consistent. As we're going to try to throw the stop route, and it does open up to Slayton. So Slayton makes that play. But I think we're going to have to shift to a lot of screens, a lot of smaller looks. Not really utilize some things as much as out to the outside. Douglas is going to have the catch. Make one man miss. Please, Douglas, your juke move is solid. But I will still take six yards every single day of the week. But if that move was made, that would have opened up. That would have been amazing. As once again, we just need our offensive line to block here up the middle. And we got absolutely nothing going. Frank Gore only struggling with a little less than three yards per carry today. But he does get involved a little bit more in the passing game. And we're looking for Bringstool here just to settle right out the first down marker. Be able to make this catch as I'm just going to have to try to dump it off to the running back. And that just doesn't work here. So we are going to have to punt this ball away. Maybe a bad scramble out by me, but I was just looking for Bringstool to settle. It just didn't work the way we needed it to. Linebacker, good job in coverage. And they're going to start now 
at the 10-ish yard line as long as we can make this tackle going down to the 15. So after we're, the bad pass was let up, we're going to start out in zone. I know we usually don't start out in zone, but we're going to go to zone here to start it out as they go quick out to Amari Cooper there for the grab. Fourth quarter is almost here. A little bit worrisome because we are down by four, but we've had some tight games so far in the second half of the season. Last episode against the Miami Dolphins, 17-18 was the final score as they go quick to the outside right against our blitz here. And Amari Cooper's actually off to the races. Oh my goodness, that play opened up a lot more. We were blitzing Kobe Bryant there off the edge, so it wasn't his fault. But that just didn't work our way. Great play calling again by the Panthers, making things work. Really having no reason to do anything crazy here. It's up the middle. We're not able to make the tackle with Dean, and they get an easy first down again. Ali finally getting his first big run of the day. But that does bring the fourth quarter, and the Panthers are driving. Our offense got a little bit static. And after such a good first drive, really not a lot since. We do have close to 250. I think we had just over 250 yards on the day, but we don't have a lot to show for in terms of points on the board. Bo Nix needs to be playing just a little bit better. I think our play calling can get improved to help him out. But they do run to start it up the middle as we do get a massive hit there with Abdul Carter. I love the force of fumble. I feel like we don't get a lot of those. But I'm not complaining because of the interceptions that we have been able to grab this season comparative to the last season if you watch that season. A little bit rough as they go quick again. They're just hitting us with these little RPOs taking advantage here as we do not have a single sack today. That is actually insane. I, I've been kind of thinking about it in the back of my mind. Didn't really realize it was that bad. But we are going to be stacking the box here. I'd love Baker to come in, get a sack, man in motion, and they're not going to give it to him. Instead, go play action. And Marcus Jones read it like a book, straight for the quarterback, no fault in the play action, able to get in there. And does that knock them out of field goal range? It does not, but it is going to make this field goal a lot longer, hitting it at the 50-yard line. Are they going to have enough leg for this? I'm going to make sure I don't even hit the kicker because I don't think this one's going in as it is going to fall just short, barely. So we're going to have great field position now to start our drive. And it's funny out there to see Bryce Young holding kicks after such an illustrious college career. He's demoted to uh, older for the Carolina Panthers. Here's Jawan Johnson starts us off. We kind of haven't used the play action rollouts today a lot. I want to try to maybe incorporate that. Kind of get easier throws for Bo Nix to make as it looks like a safety blitz. So maybe this screenplay will open up here as it is a safety blitz. And we're going to dump it off to Kadarius Tony, But they're all over it this time. Because that was Boogie Basham making a really nice play. So on this third and 10, we have to pick it up here. Crossing route is going to open up. And we needed that block from Blake Corum. That's something that we get from Frank Gore. Apparently, we just don't get it from Blake. Quorum, so now we're in a fourth and six, and th they're saying go for it, coach suggestions. So I guess we will take coach suggestions here. Try to push it to the sticks. We're gonna run a slang concept. Looks like a little bit of a cover too, as we're just trying to hit it in this window, and it is broken up. Demario Douglas couldn't make the grab. Saw our first mistake on a fourth down all season long, which is wild, but it came at a pretty bad time because we need to get this win today because the Buffalo Bills did win against the Cleveland Browns, so it makes our life a little bit harder as a throw across his body from Tua. That is wild. Tua Tungavailoa for the Dolphins last year dotted us up all the time, made a bunch of off balance throws that worked out, and now today making and doing the same in a Carolina Panthers uniform at this time around as they do run it as we're trying to fill with Christian Gonzalez don't quite but we do need a turnover we need something to go our way here at least hold him to a field goal make it a seven keep it a seven point game as the run up the middle opens up here as it is enough for the first down so Schrader their backup running back coming in being able to pick it up I blitzed like seven there and we still weren't able to fill every single gap good run blocking coming out from the Panthers as I just can't believe it's gone the way it has so far as we do find finally stop the run a little bit and this is a weird concept here we got bunches to both the outsides as they are do just pull it and we're there with two of we're able to box him up make a solid tackle read off of it i think if actually they handed off it would have been better we were the read man there we just played it way even too well confusing to him making him make a bad read so it is a 39 we're gonna go man coverage across the board here and just as they do dump it off to the running back. And that's our coverage as we can't make the tackle. I thought Melifonwu was there. No worries. We were going to be able to make the tackle. But Melifonwu, my nerves continue to go up about him because of the mistakes that he's made at this midseason point. Look, coming down here should have been an easy wrap-up tackle. No worries, Melifonwu, our backup. May not be our backup after this. I'll be more than happy to dish him to get rid of him as I'm going to shift our D-line just a little bit as it is going to be a give up the middle and it's a dive in for a touchdown. Panthers put up another score. We're still sitting at 10. Come back. Needs to get started right now late in this game. So we have four minutes on the clock in this one to get back into this ball game. 
Is it the best thing in the world? Absolutely not. Slayton's going to start it off, and that should be a pass interference. Absolutely almost getting boxed out there by Jackson. So that just didn't go our way. But maybe we can get it to fall in right here, and we don't. Slayton once again missing it. So we try to go to Slayton. Not quite working there from the superstar. We brought him in to be a great replacement just in case stuff happened to Harrison. As we're going to try to throw this one into the window up and over the top, and it is going to be intercepted. The Panthers are going to have great field position late in this one. We have to hold them to a field goal here, or else this game is over. We're probably going to have to start burning timeouts, because we know that they are going to be in chew clock looks. Our defense honestly did a solid job today. Our offense just struggled with Harrison gone, as they do actually go to the air. That is wild. They throw it underneath, and that's almost a touchdown. They're going to be on the inches. Hopefully, we can hold off any sort of run up the middle. Param coming in motion here. We know it's a run up the middle and we still can't tackle. So that's going to be it. That's going to be the end of this game. We're going to move on to next week. Forget that the Carolina Panthers, after we acquired Brian Burns, we gave him a Mapu. All those draft picks end up beating us to jump up to five and four in the season. We are going to fall down now to three losses on the year. We're still one of the top teams in the AFC East, just not number one. Rough, but that's going to be all she wrote. We did put up one last score at the end with Bringstool. Panthers did sneak in another three as well, but that's going to be all she wrote for this game. We do drop one to the Carolina Panthers early. I guess it's like when you start episodes, you lose the first game. We did it episode number one of this season, two to the Buccaneers, and now here with the Panthers. Hopefully then that just means we're going to rattle off a string of wins. That would be very nice. We do have some glaring issues that showed themselves in this game. Try to throw it a lot at the end. Bo Nix, 19 of 40. Two Tungvalu well, threw a lot better than that. So yeah, that was a tough loss. Things didn't go our way. That happens. We lose to teams that are not as good as us. I mean, the Panthers were 5-4. and four. Just overall-wise, we should have played so much better. The blessing is Marvin Harrison Jr. is back for us. Hopefully, won't miss any more time this season as wide receiver at number one for us because our roster is a little bit top-heavy now with 54 guys on it. I think Julian Fleming is going to be sent back down to the practice squad. So we are balanced there. CJ Gunner Johnson, Kevin Dotson, and Ryan Kelly still all going to miss time this week. And rankings-wise, we drop down to number 10 in the rankings. Nice thing is, though, we play the New York Jets this week, who are the 28th ranked offense. And looking at defense number 20. Six. Now, their defense is really good. It's just their offense keeps putting them in bad spots. They keep letting up a lot of big plays. And today, they're going to be without Garrett Wilson. So that just opens up a couple more opportunities for us here. Look at the rest of the receiving core. Marquise Brown, still very good. Tyler Boyd. It's interesting how he's leading almost the entire league with 759 receiving yards there. They still have Miko Hardman as well. So they have a lot of weapons, Cade Stover. And we've played this team enough now where we've kind of known what's happening. As Joe Mixon's on their roster as an 81 overall. When did he get on this team? Because he's the third running back on their roster. And he's got no carries this year. When did this happen? As I guess he's been there the whole season, just hasn't done anything. So that's wild. A little bit of a fall from grace for him. But Carson Beck off to a rough start in the season. Seven touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Not the best numbers coming out. The completion percentage also hovering below 60, almost below 56, as it actually is below 56, as he's also taken 30 sacks this season. Compared to us, he doesn't get touched. Or we don't get touched, I mean. But defensively as well, very, very good team. We know how this defense is. 87 overall defense. Derek Brown came over. Quinn and Williams and a Bryce Huff. Like, that is a team to be reckoned with. Jermaine Johnson is a backup for them. Can't even win a starting job. That's how good this team is. Their front four are going to be nuts. So our offensive line is going to have the work cut out for them. But even in the linebacking core, still not terrible. But I think that's where we're going to be able to take advantage of them. As long as our blockers up front can allow a guy to get to the second level, we definitely could have some success. And we are actually 11 and a half point favorites in this one. That is wild. Their offense is that bad. Absolutely insane that we're 11 and a half point favorites. Hopefully, Vegas isn't just absolutely loading this one up just to have the script go the other way. But real quick, since maybe some of you guys are interested, going back to the draft this year, how some of the other rookies played. First, Harold Perkins 
injured reserve. Has he played a single game this season? No. Started out the season on injured reserve, played for a little bit, went right back to it. Only one sack in his rookie year. Bust pick maybe for the Indianapolis Colts. Did jump up to an 86 overall though. Walter Nolan's done a good job for the Panthers. They just took us down. Quinn Ewers, I think leading the league in passing yards so far, 2,768. So pretty solid there from him. The first year quarterback playing well. Obviously, Abdul Carter kind of playing that linebacker spot for us. The other linebacker is Barrett Carter. That was the other linebacker I was looking at. He has not touched the field much for the Philadelphia Eagles. Not a lot to his name. Did have a forced fumble, though, in his first week playing. But he spent most of the season, looks like, now on injured reserve. Or will spend a good majority there. So did we hit on that pick? Maybe. Carson Beck, obviously, quarterback struggling a little bit as well. Cam Ward playing very, very well. How is Abuka doing for the Kansas City Chiefs? Not a lot of yards. Finally got some time in week number nine. James Pars is one of the other guys I was looking at drafting. If we decided to go Travis Hunter first, his numbers... It's pretty decent, nothing crazy. I think we did hit with Abdul Carter, but I'd love to check out Travis Hunter. How is he doing playing over for the Lions? Looking here for interceptions. Doesn't have a single one this season so far. Still is a 75 overall season stats. What are they going to tell us? Only 32 tackles, half a sack. Pass defended does have 10, so pretty solid numbers and is a superstar. A little bit rough, but you know what? I'm not going to complain. I still think we did it pretty good. Now, if we view by team here, I think looking at all these guys we did hit, except for Denzel Burke, who we did trade away. Taylor Booker, good backup out of Alabama. Haven't had any problems with him. Kobe Bryant, massive hit. Sean Martin did not get any time for us just yet. The rookie out of Virginia has spent most of the season on our practice squad. Same with Julian Fleming. Joshua Braun is now on the Seattle Seahawks at a 66 overall. So did get picked up from our practice squad. Patrick Jenkins did get picked up by the Tampa Bay Bucks after not making our roster. Jackson Dart's done pretty good. Was he worth the second round pick? I would say yes, honestly. I think he's done good anytime. Bo Nix has gone down. Donovan Edwards balling out for us as well at running back, especially recently. So were they all the greatest picks in the world? No, but they were decent hits as Denzel Burke now in two games for Carolina. Hasn't done much. Got a couple tackles. Good for him. But before we get into practice, one of the big things I do want to do is go over here and offer Brian Burns a bag and a half. The scheme fit, not what he wants. So we may have to change that around a little bit. And he's going to be a $22 million cap hit. It may just be more beneficial to play him on the franchise tag next year. But if we offer him something like this, a three-year deal that will keep him around till his age 30 season, Definitely not going to like that first offer, but this now will begin a progress of us trying to work with him and not against him to make sure he comes back. Christian Gonzalez, we're going to accept the option. Judon, do I want to bring him back on another one-year deal? Not quite sure just yet. I think all the Patriots fans out there would riot with pitchforks if that was the case. But going into practice here, we do want to stop the short pass. Their receiving court, not that good right now. We want to stop the short pass. And somebody, I'm just noticing it now as I'm talking. Somebody did mention that I sound like an announcer when I talk. I do get that a lot. Um, I used to do casting, used to do esports events um, before I made my own content, which I love that I'm getting support on my own content now. Worked in the esports industry for a while as a commentator and management for different esports organizations. So I kind of developed it naturally. Anytime I am on a camera, talk like I'm announcing just a little bit, but no injuries in practice this week, which is nice going back to that. But I do really like the comments that you guys put on my videos. I know I try to go through and respond to each and every one. And that's really because I appreciate the support. Like as a viewer, I'd love to have, you know, a favorite creator of mine or somebody I enjoy watching responding to my comments. So if I was, uh, as I'm a creator, I want to give the same thing back to you guys. So that's something that I try to do, respond to every single comment. So if you have roster moves, ideas, things you want to see, even just, hey, you suck. This is what you should do differently. I'm all for it, man. I love hearing what you guys have to say, so I really do appreciate it. But let me tell you this. I'm so excited to get out of the college dorm room, get out of the college apartment, and start making content in a better setup. Kind of worked my future around to make that happen. If you saw my community post, my company DSB officially went public. We've helped content creators earn a ton. So that has been super, super exciting. We're now partnered with TikTok inside the live creator network. So if you do want to follow me on Twitter or on Instagram, you can see updates on all that kind of stuff I have going on. But back to the game, we're going to start out here with a blitz. I want to get pressure right away on Brees Hall, on Carson Beck, get guys in that backfield. But hey, they jumped to start it off. But even with that being said, I want to run the same play. I want to get guys in the backfield. Carson Beck now may go to the air. 
but I definitely think that we can get some pressure to him as it is out to Marquise Brown for the grab. And if you remember the first time we played the Jets, Marquise Brown actually caught that massive deep ball to the left-hand side, about a 40-yard pass from Carson Beck, and that was a big trendsetter in that game, allowed the Jets to kind of spur just a little bit of a comeback. Nothing crazy here as we come up and fill with a solid tackle, but today I want no passes over 20 yards to be caught so 20 yards in the air that's a goal for today our other goal is to be able to pass the football as i'm actually going to check out of this and into a zone last second here just to kind of sit out of that as they do throw it across and it is caught anyway there by the wide receiver so i did want to check out of that only because jerome baker was man on man with boyd there and i didn't like that matchup i know boyd's a little bit slower but still don't trust jerome baker in that man to man look maybe i should have as they do now bring in the tight end fullback look heavy set as up the middle is Brees hall breaking tackles abdul carter went down that run goes for 14 luckily enough christian gonzalez was there and if we continue to let teams make plays on us maybe we check back to a 3-4 defense but i really really do not want to i don't think it's going to be beneficial for our team at all is this one underneath good coverage by bryant but i wish you just stepped in front of that a little bit more carson beck's that guy where he doesn't or he's not going to be able to win you games by driving you all the way down the field we've seen it so far with the stats this season so letting those easy completions happen are going to be a struggle as we do fill here with nicobe dean there we go the georgia linebacker rocking that 17 again able to get in there but it makes third down just a little bit harder as they go five wide again we know this is a pass and i'm gonna have Hopefully our guys play in size. We're going to drop to it as it is our Melo Fonwu falling over. So I'm done. Melo Fonwu's out. Cine's in. We're done with Melo Fonwu. I'm tired of him. To put it in perspective, that's a 68 overall receiver. Absolutely burning Melo Fonwu. So Eigen Joby is going to be in there instead. I just, I can't have that happen. That's not going to be beneficial to our team at all to have a player like him just not being able to make plays as they do go to just a play action here. Nice and easy job. Kate Stover heading out to the sideline. Abdul Carter giving chase. As that was actually Ruckert. So the other Ohio State tight end making a play there. Second and seven. They are inside of the red zone. As they do go quick, actually it's going to be screenplay to the outside. We bit in on it a little bit. Thank goodness Judon and Marcus Jones is fast enough to get back out there. But Beck is 6-6 six six to start this game here as they do check to something a little bit different. Quick play. It's going to be thrown underneath and we do stop it. So they are going to take the field goal. Hopefully they're not going to go for it on fourth and one. And it looks like they are. Wow. So we're going to decide to pinch our offensive line here. Cine, man on man, as they do run the power look. As it looks like we have it bottled up. And Cine, who comes in for Melo Fonwu, it was Eigen Joby and Melo Fonwu, was the substitution there. Cine at the safety spot. We made the play. So that's a huge stop. Kobe Bryant does go down. So we're definitely going to be seeing more from guys in our secondary. Eigen Joby's going to come in. He's solid. He's good. Is he as good as Kobe Bryant? I don't think so. But we are going to check to a pass here on this first play. And just dump it off to our running back in space. Juke move coming out. Good blocks picked up by Bringstool. But I think this game's going to be a lot of getting things done through the air. Harrison's back. Everybody's back. We're healthy. A lot healthier at least as quick. Just a Slayton. Nice and easy four. Almost the first down. As Jermaine Johnson's going to be hard to get here on a reach block. But as long as we can get it, we should be able to pick up this first down. His Corm's actually off to the races here. Good run by Corm, enough for the first down and a lot, lot more. But last chance you, Jermaine Johnson, actually like terrifying coming off one of the edges there as we go underneath to a slant route. And Harrison is back, baby. That's what we need. The quick, reliable. He's going to catch everything we throw his way, especially because Sauce Gardner still is following around the other guys here. As I am going to go to a screenplay. It's actually, we're going to throw this one up. And it's Edwards on the other side. I sold no corners out there last second. Edwards in at running back makes this play. I'll show you guys an instant replay because I don't think you saw it the same way I did. But going out here, you see Edwards just calling for it as the ball was snapped. Just throw it up right away. Safety couldn't get over. Just a complete breakdown in coverage for the Jets we're able to take advantage so the drive does continue here a lot better as we do throw it underneath lob it actually underneath not what we needed from Bo Nix the quick pass to try to hit a little bit sooner but he's starting five of five today so really good job as this is maybe we're gonna take a deep shot with Harrison one-on-one -on -one. Sauce Gardner's on the inside so we're gonna test this deep ball corner of the end zone and it is broken up we had every opportunity to make that grab we had the two steps on the corner Harrison I get it knock the rust off we need those kind of balls to be caught as on a third and one we do have to get something to roll here just quick out to bring he's gonna have the catch take an actually massive shot 
but this drive does continue here. The Jets, fourth and one, didn't get it done inside of the red zone. We need to get it done inside of the red zone. I know a big emphasis last episode was our ability to score off of turnovers. This is a turnover here. We need to make this happen. Is that the outside quorum just trying to get to the edge, get something going? But that is just a gain of one coming out. So we got to throw here. It should be Harrison if it does get out. And Bo Nix somehow rifled that ball out while taking a shot. The blitz coming out heavy. And that's really something we talked about it every single episode. He's getting better and better at the taking the shots and still being able to get the ball out as we are going to throw a fade route here to Harrison to open it up and just test him up in the air as it is caught bad coverage there. Harrison into the end zone somehow <laughs> that worked and we get in for the score. Good job. We're able to drive down the field. Harrison coming back three catches on the drive, I believe, and being able to put the score in Maddox in coverage. I'll take Maddox on Harrison every day of the week. We don't need to run the ball. When our wide receivers are cooking like that, it's again, the big three. This time it's the receiving core. Last episode was the running core. I will take the ideology of the big three all day long. So coming back out, they had a pretty solid drive and it was on the back of Carson Beck a little bit. They have one solid run from a Brees Hall. So hopefully we can shut that down, but I don't know where that pass was going with Carson Beck. Finally, his first incompletion of the day, but kind of quietly to real peppers has not had kind of the season that he had last year. I don't think he took a step back. I don't think he regressed. It's just the numbers aren't quite there. Like they were last year as they do go to the whip route here. Good settle by Miko Hardman. And that's going to be up for a good grab. And I'm not saying Jabril peppers is bad. I'm only saying with CJ Gardner Johnson missing time, that double tandem just not as effective as it has been. When you're without one, it's going to put more pressure on the other. I think that's what's kind of been happening here as they do go, what was that concept? As I completely get sucked in on it, I'll be completely honest here. As we're not able to make tackles. Brees Hall making guys miss. That was such a long, drawn-out play. Are you tell me a four-man pressure couldn't get there? That's insane. I put a lot of faith on this defensive line. And I need them to step up like across the board. All of them are good. You're telling me Judon's the worst guy on a four-man front and we're not able to get to him as they do go ahead. And another play action long drawn out this time dumped off to number three as it's fumbled. So I said I wanted Abdul Carter last game to force more fumbles. That's not what I wanted. Keep the ball in bounds here as we are going to blitz Eigen Joby. As we do come on a little run, but it is going to be caught by Marquise Brown. So third down is going to be the call. And Kobe Bryant did check back in. His elbow is fine. It just kind of turned out to be a light sprain. He can go ahead and play through that. Here we go. Biggest third down of the game. Can we get them off the field? Can we force them to take a field goal? I'm looking for anything quick and underneath, and they do settle in. And Marcus Jones kind of gets rubbed there by the tight end. So this drive is going to continue, and we're just struggling to get pressure on Carson Beck. The ball's coming out quick. They're making good throws. Maybe we'll have to implement a lot more blitzing in this one as they do counter it. And up the middle, we are completely all over that. Abdul Carter making a phenomenal play. And like I talked about last game, with him being more of an edge rusher, maybe for Penn State this season, those same kind of skills are going to be applied here. Just coming up the middle, it's going to be a little bit different instead of the other way around. Is this one dumped off underneath? I was trying to clean that with N'Kobe Dean. But the pass just went a little bit behind. I'm going to keep Matabuke on the blitz as we're going to sit here. Third and two. I'm expecting some kind of run. It is pitch play. Oh my goodness, it's a reverse. But Judon is all over it anyway. Six yard loss. Wow. Great play designed by the Jets. They are bringing out the entire bag against us in this game. Long, drawn-out read options, reverse pitches, and still, it's working for us enough as they do only get three points out of it here. And look at the bottom of the screen. The Bills are down to the Buccaneers, who we also lost to the Buccaneers. So that would be huge for us. JJ McCarthy, fingers crossed, I need you to get that win. So can we get a good return? We talked about it last episode. We struggled to get returns with Frank Gore. We don't hear. Again, only starting at the 15-yard line. I may just stop returning in general. You know, I have the mentality of return every ball. That may not be the case anymore because this is just extending the length of our drive by an extra 10 yards, and we easily fall into a hole in the field position battle as we try to throw this one into the window, and wow, pressure in our face. Somehow I see Darius Slayton screaming across the field, and we're able to fit that one in. Taking another look at it here, I was actually looking for just Blake Corum to just get across and leak out here. But you see him deep. I saw him crossing. Started throwing now right away. And we were just able to somehow get that duck out there. Two guys crunching him. And this is why Bo Nix gets hurt. Because he, we just sit so long in the pocket. 
because some of these plays are just so hard for us to actually get to develop. Here's a quick slant is going to hit, and we try to throw it in that window, go window shopping a little bit. Good breakup coming out, though, from the Jets. I was going to check it to a run here, but instead we are just going to go to a pass because I'm going to just hit it to Frank Gore, who settles, and it's jumped. Zaire Franklin jumps the pass completely. I thought he was just settling it up behind him. Somehow our corners do that, but the Jets, they jump those hitch routes as they were able to get it there. Great anticipation, Zaire Franklin. I thought it was going to be nice and easy, but that's a costly, costly mistake. Bo Nix now 10 interceptions on the year. As long as he's not Anthony Richardson. <laughs> And who has like 23 death taxes and Anthony Richardson throws an interception, I guess. But a good job by Brian Burns there making a stop. We're going to continue to bring some blitzes as we do jump. Is it Justin Matabuke? Is it the right guard? Please, as it is going to be on the right guard. So that does back them up after a decent run. Mitchell jumping. So a little bit lucky there as it is second and 11. We have to drop in as they do throw it underneath and Abdul Carter. Why can we not get those interceptions? Oh my goodness. Perfect opportunity to get off the field but we are going to bring a heavy heavy blitz here on this final third and 11 just get it quick make the play make the tackle they're going to take the field goal as this is a long field goal but we do survive after the turnover we're not able to hold them from getting any points but still the oh my gosh they missed the field goal no way we finally get the cpu to miss a field goal modern madden's tough but that is a huge missed field goal so after the bad interception they walk away absolutely empty that is huge for us in this game now if we can seal the edge oh jermaine johnson holy crap can we force this ball in no we can't i should have just thrown that one away jermaine johnson gets a massive sack still a little shocked that they did miss the field goal that we were able to hold them to no points gained but now we have a long way to go after the mistake here a little bit of a Screenplay that just doesn't work. So we're already in a third and 18. And Slayton's one-on-one -on, -one on the backside against Sauce Gardner. That's a tough life over there. So instead, we're going to try the other way to the outside. Harrison, please go up and get it. You're letting Avante Maddox beat you. That's a perfect pass. So Behringer is going to have to punt this one away. So 3-7 still your score. Almost the end of the first half here. Only 4-10 left on the clock. I mean, Mikko Hardman on the return here. Can we get somebody to give him a shot? Actually, Mikko Hardman getting a good run up the field. So we just need our defense to continue to step up here. As they do start out with a run, though, Brian Burns, I don't know why you're running with Jeremy Ruckert there. But we're going to continue to try to bring the blitz a little bit. Make aggressive plays with our linebacking core. As Covert does come in motion, and we are going to bring the blitz up the middle. It's going to be Brees Hall getting tackled by Kobe Bryant, but after dragging him enough to make it third and one. So then I expect them to kind of maybe go back to the run here. I'm going to shift our defensive line just a little bit, as we should have a free rusher, but it's a pass underneath, and it's one tackle broken, two tackles broken, and Matabuke comes from the defensive line to make the tackle absolutely killer. I should have pressed. If we do that situation more, that's where I need to press our guys, make sure that we are covering just for those first couple seconds as Carson Beck is scrambling and does get absolutely walloped. So finally, we're able to win some up the middle. That was only a three-man pressure. Actually, four-man, I do apologize, as I was with Abdul Carter. So I didn't rush on that one. I kind of scrambled out, floated, hoping for a user interception. But his second and 10 is we're going to flow out. As they throw it in the scene, Christian Gonzalez lets up the catch, and the two-minute warning is called. So against this Jets team right now, we need to hold them to a field goal. We need to go into halftime with the lead. And then I think we start with the ball, if I remember correctly. But with Jabril, we are going to float almost to the 30-yard line right now. It's quick on underneath, nothing. But Abdul Carter gets burnt by Ruckert, and they're already down at the 6. Carson Beck having his way with us, passing the football here to start this game. As this is where it really hurts. CJ Garner-Johnson, I said it last episode, our team is not as good without C.J. Gardner-Johnson in our secondary. Already a second and goal look here from the inches yard line. This could be an obvious run, but I can't lean on it too much here as it is going to be a run and then we are not going to stop it. As time gets in, the running back from Notre Dame is going to give the Jets the lead here. 10-7 is going to be your score. And I think we may try to push it here for a field goal late just to try to tie up this game going into the tunnel. So Gore is going to have to return this one as it is on the inches yard line as it is Gore finally getting a good return. We need that. And we have all of our timeouts to work with. So I'm not worried about really taking deep shots right away unless we get one-on-one -on -one coverage like this. Harrison up and over the top. Please win this one. Harrison winning the jump ball and he's off to the races just like that. That's why we need Harrison back. Is he our jump ball guy? Absolutely. Yeah, we can run him on drags. Yeah, we can do certain things. But that sort of spec catch, that sort of jump ballness, especially 
when the number one corner on every team is following around Darius Slayton. Like, I don't know why teams haven't adjusted yet, but I will take advantage of that all day long. As maybe we could put in a touchdown here as quick to the outside. We're actually going to hit Slayton, and Slayton's going to go down, but we're going to burn a timeout because as they spread themselves thin here, I'm actually going to go QB draw up the middle, and that completely gets bottled up. Okay, so not the best play call in the world, but I should have picked the B gap there to go through instead of the A gap to spin move. Bryce Huff making a good play, but really stopping the clock's not that big of an issue now because we are going to have to take shots to the end zone and leaking out. He's going to be Blake Corum, and he's going to get a good amount of yardage here. 37 seconds left, third and four, so at least we're in field goal range. Very manageable, but I would love to just try to pick this up here. Can I leave Bringstool in to block? I am going to leave him in to block here, so Harrison... Coming across, should be open. Harrison getting up the field. Can he get two touchdowns? No, I'm going to burn a timeout. But Bringstool in the block. Allowed just a second more. Harrison cut across right away. Good pick by Slayton. And we do have one more timeout to play with. So I'm going to start off here with a run. Up the middle, Kyle Juszczyk falling forward. Kyle Juszczyk, the fullback, only plays about 5% of the snaps. Comes in and gets his first rushing touchdown in a Patriots uniform. Somebody actually DM'd me on Instagram and said it was such a waste of money to go out and get him. Maybe it was, but when he comes out and makes plays like this, I can't be mad. He's got his first rushing touchdown in a Patriots uniform. I absolutely love it. As we do recapture this lead going into the tunnel, the Jets with 30 seconds left may try to go for it. We will see. Maybe we can get an interception, but... Carson Beck's kind of dotting us up. But I think here it's going to be a lot of zone coverage. Cover three. We're going to drop guys deep. I don't want to go man-to-man. -man. We just need our four-man pressure to get there, and we should be good. Is this one underneath to Jeremy Ruckert? As they are going to go the hurry up, they're not going to use their timeouts, actually. And this should take it into the half. If they're a bit too busy making audibles, this should be all good. As we are going to drop in this window, though, and we do get a big hit with three seconds left. Abdul Carter, we could have faded that in just a little bit more and get a pick. But they are going to chuck up a Hail Mary. So as long as we can make this stop, we will be chilling. Beck scrambling, and he's just going to take it out. He's not even going to risk it, so we'll take it into the tunnel. Carson Beck, 205 yards here to start this second half. Could he get a 400-yard game against our secondary? I hope not, as we do still have the lead. Combined, this game almost has 400 passing yards. I just checked. And almost to 21 rushing yards. That's the difference right here. No team really wanted to throw the ball like crazy, as we do just barely get past the 15 on this return. But maybe in this second half is when we establish the run a little bit more. I don't think Donovan Edwards has a single carry yet. Blake Horm has a couple. That good stretch play that was able to pick up the first down, I think, on the first drive of the day. So we are going to run this one here and Frank Gore just get up for about four does only get three he's the one running back that's actually really struggled for us so what I'm thinking about doing is actually benching Frank Gore but he's so good in the pass game though that's my only thing but I don't really know how I want to maneuver this team right now as we just go underneath the bring stool we send him on that drag and he's going to make third down a lot easier but maybe moving Donovan Edwards to our primary running back Blake Corum to our third down back and that's why the shotgun looks you will have Blake Corum back there and Frank Gore Jr. may just get limited reps going forward. Now, you could say, hey, what the heck's the problem with that? But we back up, make Frank Gore back up in both of those spots. And that could enable us to have a little bit more success. It's throwing a cross here. Brings to able to pick up another first down. Well, it happens anyway, apparently. Gore goes down, grabbing his leg. Was that a non-contact injury? And it actually looks like it was. So I'm really worried that that's going to be a knee injury. I, I didn't want to speak that one into existence, I promise. I really do like Frank Gore. He's played good for us. But I just, ah, that's bad. That's very bad. Because he's such a weapon for us. To have him be gone is bad. And it is just a bruised knee. And it's... Frank Gore Jr., Frank Gore Jr. I guess Frank Gore Jr. is the answer. See, all the above. With safety blitzes coming out, this is another opportunity where Harrison could just get wide open here. As actually he doesn't, but Bringstool, just across the middle again, continuing to make plays for us, continuing to be reliable. Better than Hunter Henry, in my opinion. You guys can let me know in the comments, but I think Hunter Henry's better as Anawanu is going to be down. So he's going to miss serious time with his ab tear because that's the same injury that CJ Gardner Johnson has. So that's an absolute killer as we are just going to go to a screen to bring soul to try to pick this one up and as long as we could try to get it it's not gonna work third down call the tight end screen good job by the jets reading it and we're just gonna have to punt this ball away brings will five catches not a lot of yards though Jets starting back out fullback on the field so they may try to run the ball more nope actually check away from it here and with baker we're actually gonna run with Reese if he does go out but abdul carter coming in for a phenomenal phenomenal sack i brought him off the edge completely unaccounted for they probably had him going man to man with reese hall there but it just worked out as I am going to try to press our receiving core here and just quick, easy as it is going to be incomplete. Christian Gonzalez, I need you to play that press better 
because that pass coming out is going to be quick if we do bring that sort of blitz. So we are going to bring another heavy blitz here. Just up the middle. Can we get it to work? Is it is just going to be a leak out to, to Rucker? We're going to make the tackle. So that's a good stop by our defense. Nice and easy. Abdul Carter set it up with a solid sack. Go from there. A good breakdown on the blitz. Jabriel Peppers finishing that one off. As we are going to try to go for a punt block here. We did get one last week. Probably the first one I've ever gotten in Madden, which was awesome. But with good field position to start, we're just going to take the fair catch with Marcus Jones here. Avoid any fumbles. And we get the ball at the 42, I think. As the Bills did recapture the lead. Looking at the bottom of the screen, JJ McCarthy, I need you to play better. Edwards is going to come in for his first carry on the day. A little stretch play here. And we're going to be able to get the edge a little bit here. So Edwards, good job getting four in his first rush of the day. Coming all the way in the third. Because I'm actually going to go back to it right away again. If we can seal this edge one more time. Just get up. Brings to a good block on Edwards. And it is going to be able to get up to make it a third and two. I meant to say that was a good block on Zaire Franklin there on the outside. Edwards, good move. So with that being said, can we pick up this first down just by running the ball? Brings to seal this edge because I'm going to bounce it. Please seal this. Actually, I'm going to get the first down. Nice and easy. Brings a good job of sealing him the other way. If he was sealed inside, we could have bounced that one with Blake Quorum and got a lot of success. But it's nice to be able to run the football here as they do finally go back to stacking the box a little bit. With Harrison one-on-one -on -one backside, this may just open up for us as we're going to try to throw and he's one-on-one -on -one again, just absolutely winning that battle against Avante Maddox. And if you don't know that, you can click off of play actions just by holding the sprint button that allows you to get out of that play action animation you see me use it every once in a while here is up the middle edwards just continuing to fall forward good run of four again but with frank Gore being out for the remainder of this game really not playing that third down back role blake Horm's gonna have to come in and take a lot more pass catching abilities from us as we go to a screen initially to start it good juke move to the inside he keeps making plays getting us inside of the red zone now and he's tired so edwards comes back in as everything across this board here has the signs of some zone coverage looks so if edwards can just make this catch go one-on-one -on -one, Make some plays, get forward as he just does. And it's just the consistency from him that I really like. Give me four yards every single play and I will get you a win. At this point, make me run the triple option. Get, bring me my Army's team. Actually, NCAA comes out. I cannot wait to run that offense. That's the offense I ran in high school. It's the offense I grew up on. So that would be so much fun. I was a 6'4 read option quarterback. That's the coolest thing ever. Probably is though why I played linebacker in college instead of quarterback. But up the middle on third and three. We try to run it, and we just almost do. It's fourth and two, and I think I'm going to go for this one. And Coach Suggestions does agree with me, as it is going to be a slant concept. Quorum could leak out quick if this is man-to-man. -man. Linebacker's going to have to give chase, so Quorum may be the option here, and he is. Instead, actually, we throw it right into a corner, and we drop it. Avante Maddox just sat on it. It was zone coverage. No, that's such a bad play. I'm watching this here. I can't tell if this was man-to-man -man or zone look here, because it looks like he did turn in with a slant but just read the running back leaking out too quickly as that is just not a play that wanted to go our way as they do throw it underneath abdul carter i need you to stay on that one because we were on the other side there with jerome baker the fullback does come back in for them now so i do think this is going to be a run as it is going to be a power can we feel with jabril peppers a little bit just continue to make them bounce it but they do get the first Brees hall 27 yards now on the day but just a killer i thought we locked that one up perfectly as we do just continue to bring some blitzes but they're going to run up the middle and we're there stop all the way who's coming in like that is that jonathan that is javon bullard i had to double check there for a second but that's a great play there as we're bringing heavy blitz and we get our guys to come down and press that's what we need get our guys to press but it is going to be the end of the third quarter we're into the fourth now 10 to 14 is their score you're watching modern madden this is some realism here because it's a low scoring game is this just going to be that kind of game here today is we're going to bring blitz as they do run it here on second and nine, I thought that was going to be pass written all over it. But that's him. Seven carries for two yards and a touchdown. That is one heck of a stat line. That is wild as we're going to come here, press again, and just blitz. We should have a free rusher here, most definitely, as they do bring the tight end. And we do have the rusher, and it's Judon able to clean it up. Brian Burns gets credit for half the sack there, but the blitz called on third down is huge last week we had no sacks can you believe that with our defensive line no sacks today we got to one from abdul carter finally our defensive line though gets involved with a sack and also justin matabuka has been so quiet since returning from injury but we are going to go ahead and try to get a good return on this punt here i can joby what was that blocking but i can't be too mad harrison 103 yards on the day back to his form back to the form we need him at as usually i'm a guy who likes to spread around the ball but he is a true number one he's a true number one receiver we need him all day long as we go to a stretch play as it's edwards getting into the open space jermaine johnson that was just fast enough to make the play out of florida state he was so unbelievably good 
ACC Player of the Year. I think he was a Pro Bowler this year, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm a big Jermaine Johnson fan. As leaking out, Blake Corum, please just get the first down, and no, he doesn't get it, so it's going to be third and two here. But the completion percentage a lot better today than we saw last week, as I think we can try to run for this first down here. Look, they're double covering on that left side there, but it is going to be a run up the middle. Edwards, please just get in. You get absolutely stuffed, but then fall forward last second. Oh my goodness. I thought we got stuffed there by the linebacker. That just barely opened up for us. So lucky there as it is Bo Nix pull read. And Bo Nix is going to be off to the races. Everybody giving chase, but Bo Nix, we're just going to step out of bounds. As that's a Hey, whoa, that's a late hit on him. But that is a huge rush, huge pull read. We haven't run that as much recently. We tried last week a little bit. Didn't quite work. But that one completely opens up for us. Good play call to get the quarterback in open space. As we do continue to get the run more involved here in this second half. But this time it is going to be a screenplay just out to the outside. Give me an easy three. As my hope is here, they are going to go ahead and bite on this play action. And Bringstall should become wide open. And he is. Pressure right in our face, though, as we do get this stiff arm to work out. But it is going to be third and four. We've done good on third down so far this season with our percentage the way it is. We're running that same play that got us a touchdown. So I'm actually going to leave Dewan Johnson in there to block as if we could just maybe get open. And it's going to be quick hitter as we just barely get it. Such a good play. Zaire Franklin's one of the toughest linebackers in the league leading a pass right into him it's never asking for something good but demario douglas hasn't gotten that involved today and with the safety splitting too high here if it is a cover two we could be able to hit that especially with the inside leverage played there as we throw right into it i telegraphed it all the way that's not what i wanted to do i cannot believe wally got that interception that's such a bad play again from me i'm looking at it i'm trying to throw it up and through he just completely broke broke across he had his back turned and everything and just turned right and easy into it. I'm thinking cover two. Where do you beat a cover two? You beat a cover two up the middle in the open. And I want to try to put a little height on that ball. And get it into the end zone. It just neither of those worked. So after a really good play there by the Jets. They're going to go to the run to start off here. Abdul Carter, what are you doing? You shoot through the gap wide open. Go make the tackle. Because we cannot let up a score here. Because that would just be an absolute throw job by me. Because on second one, they are going to go to a motion and actually sally it underneath so marquise brown still gonna pick up the first down but not a lot after that he's still in the negatives in rushing yards but the blitz is where we've made our bread and butter and i'm gonna go ahead and at least try to bring it here up the middle but there is probably gonna be a quick pass coming out it's actually a run coming out and that's even got a lot of open room as he takes a huge run marcus jones now banged up a little bit i can joby's gonna have to get even more playing time because that one is just a killer i can joby's comes in a corner here as it's gonna be out to the outside just float it in very easy to Tyler Boyd, and the Jets are still driving as he tore his labrum. So for the second time in two seasons, we are going to miss Marcus Jones for a significant amount of time. Actually, he started this season on the injured reserve. What am I talking about? So three injuries in two years of Patriots franchise so far as they just dumped this one off. Coming downhill, we try to go for the big hit. Hit maybe just a tad too early. But the point is now, what can Beck not do? The answer, he can do everything. He can throw, and he's just completely dominating us here as we just get boxed up again a little bit of a pick play gets tyler boyd in space melifon out there again why when anything bad happens in the past game sometimes you can just look at melifon maybe i'm just like on a hate train here but i do like him in real life though i do promise that that's why i picked him up but we just need an interception we need something to go our ways a quick dot to the outside and that's a possible breakup for christian gonzalez as he does get beat there by marquise brown and they have first and goal as they're gonna probably start letting the clock run down do i have to start burning timeouts to make sure that they're because this is four down territory for them obviously here as they do just throw it underneath, and that's a huge hit as Carson Beck gets injured. Oh my goodness, what a point in the game to get injured. Their backup quarterback is Drew Locke. I can Joby, I'm going to kind of roll here as we are going to bring the pressure. If I was them, I'd run the football, but they're not as they do throw to the outside, and Drew Locke has one pass, one touchdown because our blitz could not get there. Good job by Brown on that route. Bad coverage by us. I should have sat in that hole just a little bit more. Stick concept is so hard to guard inside of the red zone. So after the bad interception by us, the Jets do have the lead here. And it is going to be a three-score lead. We need... We need to score up on the board because we threw this game. So we do have to return this one with Frank Gore up the middle. As I'm looking for something to open up, as it does open up just a little bit. Better returns than what we've had. And we are going to start off with a run because we have the two-minute warning to play with here. And the blocks are just not there. So really, did we do that for anything? No, it just didn't work at all. Curl routes now coming out. He's going to sit right in this window. If we could throw it and try to fit it into Harrison. So on a third and nine. We have to get this first down as a pass the outside and Harrison barely keeps us in this game with that kind of catch on the outside as we do just need to get into field goal range. That's it. And we have the confusion thing coming out, which honestly just kills me. I hate it. 
unbelievably hate it here as we are going to take a deep shot up the seam douglas have him open it's just poor accuracy out of reach wally and covers there douglas just on the seam getting wide open as this out concept has been just a staple of our offense so far as we're just going to continue to lean on here as harrison catches it stays in bounds though so we are going to go a little bit hurry up and try to mix it up just a little bit here but we're just going to dump it off to the running back. Blake Corum up the field. Can we get enough of the first down? Blake Corum fumbles the football. Blake Corum, I've had nothing but problems with you. Please, dude. As we know now, they are going to have to run the football. Our guys are confused. Oh my goodness. This is just so bad here. SDMA, we can't let up a first down. And just like that, the game is over. I don't think... Oh, he stepped out of bounds. That's huge, actually. We are able to force him out of bounds. So we now we just need to hold him to a field goal. But we know that they are going to run the football here. Power play to the outside. Brees Hall, we need to tackle him one-on-one, -on -one, and Brees Hall is going to carry this one out of bounds again. Oh my goodness, the Jets are keeping us in this game by stepping out of bounds. We know this is a run. We know we need to make a stop. Please, can we just do it as the hole just opens up, and it's so easy for Brees Hall just to walk his way through. The Jets just said, hey, we'll take this one from here. So a bad interception turns into a Jet score, turns into us fumbling the football with Brees with Blake Corum. But this block would be very nice as we do block the field goal. So it is still a, it's a nine score game. So a little bit different if we were able to put up a touchdown. And because we didn't burn any of our timeouts, if we score quick without burning any of our timeouts, that would be huge absolutely huge as we're going to get frank gore here on the return frank gore please turn on the jets you're only in for returning right now as right away i guess we're going to have to test a deep shot and he's one-on-one -on -one again so we're going to test it to him as he's going to go up avante maddox good coverage on him so we just need something to go our way we need one pass to open up one breakdown to happen as i'm going to test it here and harrison's open there's no way burns maddox he's so slow though right now as he misses this tackle swipe and harrison into the end zone there's no way there's no way that play goes our way harrison we see the burners go on those are so he was so slow i am holding down the sprint button tighter than i've ever held a sprint button in my entire life but just a broken coverage there the crossers concept the switch concept worked in the route tree usually the wheel route opens up there which is crazy and just like that joey slide please put in this extra point and now it's a two score two point game i'm sorry as we're gonna kick this one deep but we have to stop the run that's what we have to do we have to stop the run because if we can stop the run turn around get ourselves in a field goal range oh my goodness i need to stack the box we are guessing run left here so that is a little bit worrisome as it is going to be a run left we're able to get all over burn a timeout right away and i'm really surprised that they are not bringing Brees hall in but we guess run right and we're going to be all over it again there's no way there's no way this could go in our favor we still need to get a field goal though and on this last one i am going to bring a blitz we are going to put pressure on Drew Locke here as it is going to be a run. And Abdul Carter's there. We're going to burn another timeout. They only took 10 seconds off the clock. And we maybe come back in this one. And so back there to return because of the injuries to Marcus Jones is going to be Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton to the outside. He's got speed. And we're just not able to get the edge. 29 seconds left. We need to throw to the sideline. We need to spike the football. And we need to put ourselves in field goal range. And you see it. The Jets are dropping everybody. We're going to have to try to really get something working here. Because we're going to test backside first to Slayton. Slayton, please go up. No, that's a tough one on Sauce Gardner. I think that it was out routes to the outside. Maybe the play we do. But we know they're probably going to be playing for it with 24 seconds left. We need to lead this pass to the sideline. This has to be onto the sideline, and it's not. It's not even caught. 20 seconds left now. We're just breathing an opportunity to life here. Can we please get it to work? This would be huge as we are just going to test a deep shot to Harrison not working 15 left. Oh my goodness. It's fourth and 10 anyways. And Harrison is out on this play. So if we could try to force this ball to the sideline and just get it in, it doesn't fit. So after all of that, we do walk away with a loss. That's a killer. We gave ourselves the opportunity to try and win this football game against the New York Jets. No freaking way we could have had the win. We threw it. Drew Locke is going to be the one kneeling the ball down as we now drop two straight games. Not what we wanted to open up the second, the true second half of the season so far in the second half of the season. One and two overall because we did play that in week nine game post trade deadline, especially against the division rival though. That is killer. We just barely snuck out a game last episode against the Dolphins. The AFC East still very, very tough to play in, but this loss is going to kill us. Stats-wise, I think we threw for 350. How many did Harrison have? 211. 
I really don't like forcing the ball to somebody, but uh, Harrison, yeah, we're, we're, we're forcing the ball to him. It's as simple as that. He's the best player on the field at any given time, running the ball-wise. We struggled. I mean, the Jets' defensive line, I we know, is very, very good. Tackles for loss had a good amount of tackles for loss. We played pretty well against the run. Marcus Jones just getting everywhere at slot corner. He may not be slot corner anymore. I may, I'm thinking about putting Christian Gonzalez over there at slot corner. But we have to look on to next week now because I cannot believe that this game went awry. So now that we lost two straight, where does that put us in the standings? Well, at six and four, we're still in a wild card spot. I'm pretty sure, yes, the top wild card spot holding it with the Texans and the Ravens as well. That loss to the Jets hurts, and it does set us back. Taking a look at the stats here, Bo Nix fifth in the league in passing yards and turnovers slowly climbing back up those ranks. So it's something we definitely need to watch out for. I know a lot of you guys have said, hey, maybe it's Jackson Dart time. Do I want to do that? Absolutely not. Anthony Richardson, five touchdowns, 23. That, that still, I can't wrap my mind around that. But for upcoming free agents, we need to offer Brian Burns, Hunter Henry, Bentley. Maybe we could let him walk. Hunter, we could also let walk. Jawan Johnson, definitely want to bring back. So it's not going to be very expensive free agency for us or upcoming free agency in terms of the re-sign period. But Marvin Harrison slowly climbing back up the ranks, now sitting at 7th in receiving yards. Long of 77 this season, which is nice and almost at the top in terms of touchdowns. Wow, the San Francisco 49ers balling out. I know Brock Purdy is doing pretty well. And looking at it, 19 touchdowns, 2 interceptions on the season. That is actually a lot more ridiculous than I even thought. And against the Cincinnati Bengals this week, they're going to be out without some interior guys and a Jordan Battle. So the defense lacking a little bit. While well, we're missing three key players to our team, Kevin Dotson still battling injury, Mike Anuanu, and CJ Gardner-Johnson. And against Cincinnati, we're still actually projected by 5.5 points to win. I want to see the comparisons again. The fourth down conversions for us, the fall off of what was really good third down, fourth down conversions for us has been huge. Still on third down, we're doing pretty well. But the Bengals are running the football really effectively, and we know they don't have Joe Mixon anymore. Instead, it's Quistron Junkins, who's out of Ohio State, up to an 88 overall, backed up by Sean Dollars, who is an 82 as well. So this running attack for them, actually ridi ridiculous. Junquavius Marks also there at a 73. Such a good team across the board. Charlie Jones doing better than T. Higgins. That's actually hilarious. Charlie Jones, what is he up to now? 78. So he developed pretty well. He's like a 72 at the start of Madden in this season. But Joe Burrow, only nine touchdowns on the season, six interceptions. Not a lot of work done there. It's just their running attack has actually been carrying this team. They're sitting at an 88 overall offense. And it looks like they are hot as well and rattling off a couple of wins. They've gotten themselves a win streak, and I want to be confident. I don't want to insult them. And our team's going to be fired up with a plus 10 break tackle. So Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum need to be massive for this game. And we do want to be able to stop the deep pass. I still don't want Joe Burrow to beat us over top. He can beat us over top at any given time still with that receiving core. And I want to throw it short today. I want to take a look at the roster one more time, see how I want to attack it. But we can't afford to lose another superstar or any player in total going into this week. And it looks like we're good on the offensive line portion. We can pick up one guy from free agency for this week or promote somebody from our practice squad. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And even though they have some defensive line guys still out, it's a pretty solid team still across the board there. Corners maybe where we can attack a little bit, but still DJ Turner and Cam Taylor Britt both develop really, really well. This defense is pretty solid. And maybe the run game that takes us home today. And to add another tight end to the squad, Carter Runyon is going to be picked up. He's got 88 speed. Not the best development, but I think if we just sign him to a one year, just bring him up from the Jets practice squad, he could fill a little bit of a role, especially speed at the tight end position. If we do want to move on from Hunter Henry later, maybe get on a roster spot later on. And so we're going to jump into this Thursday night football game, finally at home. And with Harrison having such a good game last week, having to come back, make plays, 211 receiving yards is nuts, putting him right back in to that race for top receiver in the NFL, matching up against Jamar Chase. So we'll see. Can the olds, which is weird calling Jamar Chase the old, beat the new today? With Charlie Jones playing so well and still having T. Higgins on that roster, it's going to get very, very interesting in this game. And with our offense having some recent struggles, can we pick things back up? and get back in the win column three straight losses would be a very very tough stretch and maybe would knock us out of the afc east race going into after this week to this final stretch of six games in the season but if you made it this far make sure to like and subscribe and i know the videos are taking a lot longer to produce 
there is going to be a fix to that. I pinky double promise, and I'll explain that a little bit later as Frankor on a solid return gets us out. And some of the changes that we made last week are going to be continuing into this one today. Donovan Edwards is going to be our starting running back. Blake Corum is going to be our third down back. Frank Gore will not see as much time as Josh Uche makes the first play of former New England Patriot. And Bringstool is going to be still starting at a tight end. So here we go. Quick out to Edwards in the flag. We make one man miss and we do. Edwards off to the races to make third down a lot more manageable luke wilson on the tackle but this is where quorum checks in looks like maybe a double blitz if we can hit it quick out to him can blake quorum get the first down we threw that ball even before he made that angle cut on that route still able to fit it in though quick and easy and this is maybe how the new running back system will work for us we're going to try it out in this game. Almost knocked down by Trey there. So hopefully this running back balance will be a lot nicer here is up the middle. We try to go again on the run. That one only for three. And I think one of the things also in this game that I want to take advantage of is the rollout opportunities. If we can fit this here to Drew on Johnson, he's able to make the grab. Bo Nick starting three for three. And I am just so excited to be back recording. If you didn't know, the whole last month of videos, ever since actually almost Patriots, almost Patriots franchise started, We've been crippled with a broken PC, a corrupted file, and more. Finally, I'm back at my setup. The PC is fixed. We can record videos without the laptop coming into play. It's actually up the seam. I'm looking at this all of a sudden. Harrison in the slot. Could this hit quick? As we're going to try to go to it. And Harrison's going to have the grab. Lining him up in the slot did work there. So maybe the hot streak can continue for him. But going back, hopefully the hot streak can continue for the videos. I have a new schedule that I think is going to work. And it's going to incorporate some other types of videos. Something I'm really excited about. Something I really, really want to do is this one doesn't fit in. As I think it's going to be six games in six days so six days spread between episodes and in the in-between we're going to start working on other rebuilds using modded madden to its fullest potential so if you're interested in seeing me rebuild one episode one team that's it i think that would be super super fun to do is we're going to try to throw it up to harrison two men jump out there so maybe not the best look i should have swung it out to the running back but joey sly is going to come in and nail in this field goal is we start with three should have started with seven but we do still start with three so yeah let me know what you guys think about that but hey it's back to the game here we know the Bengals have a phenomenal rushing attack and i expect them to go to it early actually they do go to the air it's quick on the slant route good knockdown by christian gonzalez didn't quite get his head turned around all the way but if he can have success today against jamar chase that is going to be one heck of a day as we are going to bring marcus jones on a blitz here as a yard is going to go counter and we were almost there with him i thought it was going to be play action I was going for Joe Burrow. The counter took it right away from us. They're already in a third and seven. So we're expecting Marcus Jones today to be huge on Charlie Jones. That's a matchup I think we can win all day long. As if they go the other way, that's where we're going to have a little bit of issues. Kobe Bryant matching up there. I think I'm going to switch it to being by overall. As all of our secondary is pretty fast. So we should have some success. But I don't like this. The Bengals do two running back sets. You don't know where they're going to run the ball. As they're going to hit this one across the middle. And Kobe Bryant's there in coverage. But Charlie Jones still brings it down. On this second and one, I am expecting a run up the middle. And it is a good trap block there. And they're off to the races. Jabriel Peppers having to come down from the safety spot. As Junkins really having success on his first run of the day. And if I'm the Bengals, I'm going right back to it. Will they, though, is the question. Junkins back there again as they do give it. Actually, it's not Junkins. It's the other running back as it looks like they're splitting carries. Sean Dollars is there managing to get five. I'd love to try to put a nail in this rushing attack as they're just going to keep kind of going at it. We just got absolutely leveled. Junkins able to get the first down easily. Good tackle by Cine there at safety. But wow, what an... <laughs> Jerome Baker took a little bit of a shot there. So right now, they have no reason to go to the pass at all. Finally, we're able to bottle one up. Nakobe Dean, I still love that he's rocking the number 17 jersey. He was able to fit in for the tackle. Cena's going to get a lot more reps today. Hopefully, we're able to have some success. Everybody kind of tight packed. No high safety look as a screenplay quick coming out. Out to T. Higgins. I would love to match field goal with field goal here, but hopefully, here we go. It's across the middle, up over the top, and Charlie Jones brings it in. I get Joby there in coverage, and I need it. If he can't run with Char uh, Charlie Jones, maybe the next Cooper Cup, for all I know, for how well he's playing this season, the emergence of a sneaky athletic wide receiver. You can make all the jokes you want, but that's the simple case there as they do go run inside the red zone. We're scraping across with Dean and that's a good bottle up to start. It's on the goal line here. They're going to try one more run. Sean Dollars gets bottled up one more time. Abdul Carter getting it done. And that is the end of the first quarter. So two long sustained drives 
Only three points in total to show for, but the Bengals are knocking on the door, and it really is that rushing attack getting put to good use here. We're going to shade our corners inside. Man-to-man -man coverage across the board. Third down. We're filing out, and it's a missed throw. Jabril Peppers, if that was on target, Jabril could have taken that interception. I really think so. But the Bengals are going to take three as well, so a good hold by our defense as McPherson is going to be the one to knock this in so we're going to be back returning with Frank Gore as this one is going to be returnable for him and we need to see something a big return coming out from Frank Gore that one's solid but not a lot of the same success that we've had last season and that's what's striking me the most and I know you guys said hey throw to your running backs throw to your running backs Blake Quorum is skillful at catching the football. So if we could just pick up our blocks here, we could return the favor on this run as it is going to be Donovan Edwards doing a good job to get four. So we're going to try to establish this for ourselves. Blake Quorum now checks in the game. We're going to try one more run. A good block from Bringstool. Almost able to get it through as Blake Quorum banged up on this play now. Hopefully he's not going to miss too much time. So we have to throw quick for this first down as with a pressure off the edge right away. With the injuries to our offensive line, that was one of the things I was very, very fearful of. If you were worried like I was, here was a move off the edge right there. Makai Becton, Sidney So getting absolutely demolished. Actually, that was Cole Strange on that side. Absolutely demolished for a third down sack. A little bit of a killer there. Barringer is going to have to punch this one as deep as possible. And he's going to be returned by none other than Charlie Jones coming down. Kyle Juszczyk. With a massive hit. Actually, not, that's not use check. It's a pectoral strain for Blake Corm. I'm going to keep him in the game for now. But we do definitely need to stop the run this time around. It is a missed tackle there by Kobe Bryant. That one does go for two still because we're able to pull it up. But I want to get our front four to be able to get movement. And from there, worry about the rest. Worry about our secondary. We're a little bit younger in our secondary. Is this a counter play coming out? And Junkins hit. It's a great great cutback as he just continues to have his way so far in this game as they go once again dollars this time we're all over it kobe bryant though getting banged up now which is fine because i can joby i trust him a little bit here but what i don't trust is this out here man to man coverage with nakobe dean not the look i want but we come in instead and make a huge tackle to force third and 11 we need to bring the blitz here get the ball out fast as this is really going to rely on marcus jones on t higgins because that's an inside look here free pressure up the middle we're all over bob little dub they didn't throw to the sticks and after we got nothing going the Bengals return the favor for us and that's a big game at the bottom of the screen we need to pay attention to we want the Chargers to win as Kobe Bryant knee cartilage chair will not be able to return. That's bad because he struggled with injuries in the preseason, missed the first three games of the season, came out, played so unbelievably well. But if he can't stay healthy, I don't see a reason to really allow him to have this starting look as Jones is actually going to get the return here, run to the sideline, but he does get chased down pretty well by that linebacker. So we are backed up and we are doing a risky rollout here as they bring quick pressures. We're going to try to dump it off. Thank goodness we do. Good blocking down the sideline by Harrison as that's a huge gain. That could have been very, very bad. Luckily enough, worked in our favor as we go out here and that is going to be a roughing the passer call, hopefully. So from almost getting a safety, is this a holding call instead? Bo Nix got absolutely demolished there. Instead, Sydney Snow's going to back us up all the way to the 18. As it looks like this is a blitz here. As we're going to leak this one out to Edwards and just let him run up the field. Edwards taking a good stab back at it. Only able to get five, though. Wilson so fast out of that linebacker spot. So we are going to go empty set. Look, just across the middle. Edwards once again. Not for a lot of yards. I'm worried about our offensive line. And that's something that's just scaring me in this game. As we're motioning guys out. Three seconds left on the play clock. Down to one. As this pressure in our face. And we're just going to try to throw it. Almost intercepted. Bo Nix not able to get it there again. As I saw the pocket break down on that left hand side. So unbelievably quickly. We only have a little bit of time to throw. That's it. I saw the comments. I know you guys are like our offensive line is struggling. Yes. Modern Madden makes it so much harder for our offensive line to get work is who is this is that's actually rookie xander mueller making the special teams play there so solid on his part but back to it it's a strong hard motion from our offensive line to be able to get things rolling it's simple as that it's hard in modern men but it's getting worse because of how makai becton and austin jackson have played so far today i mean that's what's going to happen when mike and one who's going to be out with an injury it should be a next man up mentality but it's not always going to work as on second and four, it's going to be a run. And we're there bottling it up with Jabril as we are going to try to bring a blitz on this third and five as they go quick underneath. And that's actually a bad throw coming out from Joe Burrow. So far, our offense 
their defense has stepped up when we needed them to so far. This clock ticks down. I want this to be the last possession of the half. I want to be able to sit there, drive down the field, and make plays happen. As Kadarius Tony on the return. Solid break tackle. I like that. I do want to get the pass going here. It's quick to the outside. Oh, Harrison's got a lot of running room. Ziggurat burned one as he's off to the races here. Breaking tackles and almost able to stay in bounds. Harrison, a one-man army for our offense. When he's out, our offense doesn't click. When he's in, oh my goodness, we can throw the ball around. Darius Slayton not having a lot of looks in this game. Same with Demario Douglas. Uh, we almost broke one, two, and almost three tackles there. That would have been a superstar level play. As we're going to continue to strike through the air right now. As one-on-one, -on -one, out to the outside. Can we throw this one up? And it is almost brought in. I had to test it once again. So we are settling back down in the read option. Look, have a pull read for Bo Nix here. And this one actually opens up. Bo Nix off to the races. He's going to get enough for the first, actually. As late in this first half, maybe it's going to be the run that's going to get working for us. We're going to try to get this one to the outside. As it is, but it's going to be a holding call. As it is Blake Corum busting off a massive run, making two guys miss. But we're going to get flagged with a hold here. That's such a killer. Another one in this game. We got to be one of the most penalized teams in the NFL. Cole Strange now. So now first and 18 here as we do try to run it up the middle. Only get one out of it. Edwards in his first like true start. Maybe you want to call it that. Not having a lot of success. And the two minute warning is here. And if this is what they're doing. Harrison one on one backside again. Should have a little bit of success. We're actually going to go out to the outside here. Demario Douglas, he's going to make it a third and five instead. And I'm going to let this clock tick down. I think time-wise, we should be solid. It's just that out route was able to work for us here. And now leaking out is going to be Edwards. Just enough for the first down. Fall forward. So once again, in striking distance. But we have to perk this into points. This may be zone coverage, actually. Unless somebody has to run out with it. As I see Johnson in the corner of the end zone. It's Trey Hendrickson one-on-one -on -one with Jawan Johnson. I will take that matchup any day of the week. I saw it instantaneously rolled out, put the eyes on, and such a good play. Kadarius Tony may have been open there with the DB kind of taking it back out of the end zone. But hey, Jawan Johnson able to strike, able to get in. Brings to not having the success today, but it is Jawan Johnson. He's playing for another Patriots contract and going to halftime. We now have a 10-3 to 3 lead. There's still a minute left. We know the Bengals are going to try to drive, but that's a solid, solid drive coming out from us. Set up from a great rip whip route from Harrison. We're going to try a blitz to start off here with one minute left. As they do go quick out to the running back, and it's just another miss from Joe Burrow. So now we're going to sit in a cover three. I want them to throw underneath if they are going to throw. So let's see what we can do here. Is they're going to strike quick to the outside. Jamar Chase, we're able to get him down. But that's a massive completion for them. They're going to go right to the hurry up offense. They are motioning around. So it is taking a lot more time off the clock. So once again, fading out. And Joe Burrow's going to have to scramble. And finally, Brian Burns comes up huge. A Brian Burns sack. Something that we've been waiting to see as Joe Burrow scrambling out. Stood absolutely no chance against his speed. And what is this look here? Javon Tavion Sanders out there at the running back spot. This maybe should take it to the end of the half. So good job by our defense there. Brian Burns making the impact sack when we need it. As we go into halftime in our home stadium with the lead passing yards, dominating rushing yards, not so much. Donovan Edwards struggling a little bit. 11 of those 26 coming from Bo Nix. So now starting off in this second half, we're going to kind of stick with that same defensive game plan. We played so unbelievably well, and if they want to run against us, we should have a little bit more success in this half. I want to play the safeties more coming down into the box. For the way Joe Burrow's throwing, we may only have to run one high safety looks as we're going to use Jabril Peppers here. Yeah, he's coming in a blitz, but we're actually going to hang in a QB spy as they do actually run to this one to the outside. And Junkins has actually got a lot of space down the sideline. Luckily enough, we're able to track him down. You try to bring a safety into the box, and they try to run to the outside through the opposite way. Is actually a holding call. It's called, and this may bring them back as it does. So thank goodness. Finally, something goes our way, and I think they're going to try to pass out of it. So I'm going to guess pass here on second and 16. Abdul Carter, we're going to run here with Sean Dollars. As they do pick everybody up and out to the outside, Marcus Jones lets up the completion to T. Higgins, but still third and 10. As that's been our bread and butter, force the Bengals into very, very long plays. As we're actually going to move man to man here. As they jump, thank goodness. That was a horrible setup for us on defense with Abdul Carter one on one against Charlie Jones. So we're going to do it again. Only bring three this time on a third and 15. Have them really throw underneath as they do. And we're right there with Jerome Baker. Make the tackle fourth and five. See you later. We're getting the ball back. So now Kadarius Tony is going to be back to receive as pressure's in their face right away. Can we get a good juke move? He's able to break one tackle last time. This time, eh, not so much, but it's still a decent return in our offense. I want to make it a two-score game. As it actually looks like they're going to bring the safety 
off the edge here, corner off the edge. So we're going to hit this quick to the outside. Instead, Harrison one-on-one -on -one, as they actually drop him instead, but Harrison still able to make the grab. Oh my goodness. So they, did, they didn't bring him. They dropped him instead. We were still able to put it in. No, I'll take that. And it really feels like Slayton just become obsolete in this offense, which sucks. So I do want to eventually get him involved. And it's not going to be here. Instead, we're going to throw back across our body. Jawan Jennings, Jawan Johnson getting open as I'm referencing old Patriots here. Not, not what I want to do. But we are finally going back to the ground with Donovan Edwards. And finally, Cole Strange getting a good pick up there. Edwards off to the races, out to the outside. And finally, a good run from him. And with Harrison in the slot again, we're going to put him up the seam one more time. As we're going to hit this quick, actually. And Harrison up the seam. They're not covering him correctly. And he's going to put us down at the one yard line. Almost able to dive in. Why are they not covering this guy? We're moving him around, making him an absolute king of this offense. 115 yards receiving today. This hot streak from him just continues. A good play action, fit it in. Bringstool kind of taking it, Logan Wilson out of the play there, and he's splitting that cover two look. At least I think it was a cover two look from them. And it was their show camp a cover two. Logan Wilson ran with Bringstool instead. That opened it up. So on the inches yard line, Blake Corum hopefully can try to run this one in here as we're going to go up the middle and he does fit it in. So Blake Corum gets the rushing touchdown. Donovan Edwards a good run, but Marvin Harrison, man, still doing his job is going to put us up 17 to three. Finally, maybe looking like we could get back into the win column as Joey Sly is going to go ahead and make this a 14 point game so let's see if we can get one more stop joe burrow in this offense not the success that they wanted here today is we fill try to fill junkins with another really good cutback we're able to chase him all the way around with your own baker and judkins still averaging four yards per carry less than what he usually gets this season i think he's up to 4.6 but so far i'll take that all day long as they go another power look and junkins still trying to fight forward as i really wish blake Corum or Donovan Edwards kind of developed the way he did. Unfortunately, we are struggling on the development side, but nonetheless, they still get the first down here. So we're going to drop a Jerome Baker instead and bring him out of bouquet as they do run this one up the middle. We're filling right away. Jerome Baker, the blocking scheme there just didn't quite work. Dollars, their speed guy, isn't doing what he's supposed to be doing, and we'll take advantage of that. And this is where it gets risky. We've gone one-on-one -on -one with these wide receivers all day long, but they just continue to try to feed Junkins, and it's just not working. Third and six now. He's got 13 carries on the day. We know this is going to be a pass here. We're going to be running with Judkins to the outside as they do throw it underneath. And that's almost a good breakup. That's actually pretty solid coverage out there. I'll take it. And nonetheless, the drive for the Bengals here to try to come back in this game will continue. Another run here. We're filling up. Jerome Baker really just having a very busy day. I want to see how many tackles he has. It's actually that number amounts to seven so far. Thank you, Madden. See, Madden listens to me. I absolutely love when Madden listens to me as we almost do jump there as it is a play action finally coming out. This one just quick to the outside. Not a lot to gain out of it. Spurrow still yet today to top 100 yards pass. Needs one more though, so will he do it? Probably as quick to the underneath. And this one's a dropped interception. Gonzalez couldn't have gotten a better opportunity. You are killing me. As the Bengals will attempt a very, very long field goal for Evan McPherson. This one past the logo as it is going to be up and it has the distance and it just falls short i don't even know how long that was some guy in the usfl hit it so you know what hey i'll take that all day long and i want to take a deep shot after it here douglas should be kind of moving across the field as i actually going to try to take a deep shot this one floats up almost intercepted at bo nicks took a hard shot on that one so let's resettle nothing crazy here out to the outside hey edwards take this one and get up field good juke move coming out he continues to break tackles and fall forward for us so in this third and two i'm gonna try a read option try to get it to work here out to the outside as they bottled this one up all day long guest run quorum six for ten on the day the fall needs to be studied as we will be able to put in a field goal oh gosh this is from 61 so just a little bit shorter than what Evan McPherson attempted with Joey Sly. Can we be able to knock this one in? Looks pretty good with 7 mile per hour wins. Is it going to have the leg? And it doesn't. So two missed very long field goals from both kickers. Because maybe we should have just punted it and pinned them. As I just need to get away from the deep ball. The deep ball just doesn't work. Especially with the time that we have in the pocket right now. It's just not going to be in our favor. As they are going to run it here to start right at the middle. Trevon Bullard though coming down making a solid tackle. See that's what I mean. Bring the safeties down in the box. In hook to curl zones at least one of them as i'm really surprised the Bengals have not gone to a more pass heavy offense as they're going to try to do it again as we are just bottling it up brian burns a good disrupting play quarterback hit not a sack so they're already backed up 
Quick up the seam, though, is going to be hit. Javante Sanders, the tight end out of Texas, gets it and almost puts them inside the red zone right away on that one. And with them loading up the box, we're going to shift to a heavy look, but that is going to be the end of the third quarter. So we're going to move into the fourth now. 17 is the three is the score. Our defense playing so, so well. So let's try to stop a score from going in here as I'm looking at it and I see it. Charlie Jones... I read it all the way. That's in one score touchdown to open up this fourth quarter. This just became a one score game, but come on. I was there with Abdul Carter, just not tall enough to get over, not fast enough to make that shift. It was just a four verticals concept, simple as that, as the drag route fell its way in. So it looks like they're actually going to go for two in this one. That's a weird scheme here, as I'm maybe expecting a run with Junkins, and it is up the middle. Can we fill Abdul Carter with a play? Interesting play call from the Bengals. This is now it's an eight-point game. And so Marvin Harrison Jr. and the rest of the team is going to come on out. Harrison, only four catches on the day. But man, he's made them count. Because I still just can't believe that play call coming out from them. That's not what I would have expected. Is the read option still going to be continuing to be our friend here? Is if we can pick up these blocks, that'd be nice. Quorum, please start falling forward. He's still under two yards per carry on the day. But maybe we can get him involved a little bit more in the passing game. This is going to be a screenplay. Hopefully it'll all work out as the defensive line does get sucked in, but nobody's out there to block and we just missed the linebacker flying through. And so this is going to be a huge third down pickup for us if we can get it to work as I am going to try a deep shot here as Bringstool brings it in and it's broken up like that. Oh my goodness, Jake Bringstool, a perfect shot to him. He's able to use his big frame, make the grab. And that, oh, he almost made a football move before that was broken up. As that drop absolutely hurts. And now the Bengals are given the golden goose here. As Charlie Jones is going to take this fair catch. They're going to start at about the 24. But now it's just a one-score game. They have the ball middle of the fourth quarter. Now our defense really, really needs to step up. Bullard is going to be a huge matchup with Sanders. We need that to work as they are going to go a run to start. And it is Brian Burns tracking him down from behind. Really, really good job there by Judon to kind of hold up that block as Barrymore is limping a little bit. So we're going to try to overload here with a little bit of a blitz. Baker coming downfield. We expected maybe another run with how this Bengals team has worked so far as it is a run. Good tackle again, third and eight. And so we're going to overload it here. Force this ball out quick. I'm expecting something quick to the outside, especially to T Higgins here as we are going to bring, and we have a free rusher with Baker making Joe Burrow scramble quick. Nobody touch him. And that somehow worked. The heavy blitz was enough to get Joe Burrow to scramble out of the pocket quick. So after all that, we just force a punt. Bearmore did dislocate his hip, if you are wondering. Hopefully, he'll be good. I can't suffer any more major injuries, but you see the whole injury report. The whole league has been roughed up this year. Jones now getting the return as that one goes for nothing. So starting out, I put the two clock on. I want to start draining time in this game already. Here's a run to the outside. Edwards just get forward, get a couple, and go down. As hopefully this read option will finally open up for Bo Nix to have a solid scramble here. Unfortunately, doesn't as did Hendrickson on Jake Bringstool, who's struggled in this game blocking and apparently catching as we saw in last drive. So hopefully we can pick it up right here as we're going to go to old reliable out to the outside and Harrison burns him on the curl route that's a huge play so hopefully our drive can continue and sustain here Edwards this time breaking off a nice run up the middle breaking one he picks up a to keep this drive rolling a long sustained drive here could mean or could spell end of the game for the Bengals and so here we go Edwards leaning on him once again up the middle I see the hole just a little bit Bringstool not able to get the push forward so a third and one that is so very crucial but we're gonna lean on him one more time, Edwards. Can we pick it up? And we do. Edwards, another good run for the first. So now Blake Corm is going to check in the game at running back. We're going to do a pin and pull to the outside. And Corm's got a little bit of space. His juke move on the outside is so unbelievably lethal. Problem is, up the middle, he seemed to struggle so much. Maybe it's our offensive line. I don't know what it is. And so here we go. Just run after run after run. Edwards trying to chase to the outside. He gets tackled for a three-yard loss. So that one hurt. And so four minutes left in the game. One of the biggest conversion downs for us here is we're going to try to throw this one up this seam. And I think if I waited just a little bit longer, I was so afraid of our offensive line. That one would have worked. And it says take a 60-yard field goal, Joey Sly. We're not going to do that. We can't do that. We're going to punt them deep. So we are going to try to pin them deep. Behringer need to get a good punt out of him. 
Modded matting punting is a little bit harder as we're going to try to nail this one. And is it going to fall in? No, it's going to be right out of the back of the end zone. You saw I put almost no power on it. It's, it's a different punting mechanic. <laughs> but our defense has to step up one more time. We've only allowed one touchdown today. And let's just continue to try to have success. They dump this one off to dollars. Hey, what are we doing there, Gonzalez? And now we're going to switch over to the dime. Look, they're in a four minute type of offense. They definitely have to be. They're not going to be running the ball, right? Yeah, they're going to be in going passing through the air out the outside as that one's caught almost falling underneath of it is Bullard. But this is just moving the ball too fast right now. Joe Burrow finally coming alive, I guess, at the perfect time as they throw this one quick out route. Charlie Jones met quick by Marcus. He tops almost 70 yards today. So I guess, hey, he is the real deal. Jamar Chase hasn't had that crazy of a day. And if you remember last year, Jamar Chase had three or four touchdowns against us. It was ridiculous. They do go almost just sweep. And instead, we're going to be caught running with it. And we're almost there. Christian Gonzalez almost steps in front and drops another interception. We can't have this comeback, please. If you remember last season, he was stone hands. McGee is on this third and one. We are going to go ahead, bring a heavy blitz as they are going to run it here. And we're going to meet it with Javon Bullard, a fourth, fourth down. Good play by Javon Bullard. Can we get it one more time here? Or are they going to run it on this fourth and two? As it looks like they will. And we're going to meet it with Jerome Baker. And we stuff him. And that's going to be the game after just one first. That's all. Okay, it's not game. We need one first down. But our defense stands strong again. It's not our offense getting it done. We've only put up 17 today. But we've held the Bengals so far to nine. As we are going to bring in Donovan Edwards. And we need this to work. Edwards is going to open it up. Edwards to the outside. Stay in bounds, please, Edwards. And he just goes down. And that is going to be the game. As it looks like they are going to stack the box. Harrison, one-on-one on the outside. We're, we're not going to pass it. We're just going to try to run it here. And just go down. Make them burn their timeouts. Blake Corum now coming in the game. The only thing that would kill us is a fumble. Please, I'm knocking on wood. Can't have that happen. As we're going to run this one up the middle. And that's just not a good cutback lane there. As I think we get, did get the first down just a little bit too quickly. As the Bengals timeouts puts it now with a minute 45 left. We're going to be able to drain a lot more of the clock here is Edwards just I need you to fall for it I need a field goal out of this at least to seal this game and so Joey Sly from 51 we need to be able to put this one in it's going to be up and it looks like it should have the distance and that is going to be the nail in the coffin hopefully they're going to get the ball back the Bengals are going to be able to go on a drive but 20 to 9 is your score here big kick from Sly with not a lot of time left as our lead is extended to 11 I'm still a little bit confused why the Bengals went for it but I'll take it I would love an interception I would love something like that but they're going five wide so we're going to switch over to man to man drop a safety as guys are running around trying to get in position here as Charlie Jones should be almost open across the middle with Abdul Carter one-on-one, -on -one, didn't quite like that. So we're going to shift over to the dollar, bring Abdul Carter on the blitz. Let Jerome Baker run with the running backs, as hopefully we can kind of get this to work. Is out to the outside. Charlie Jones is open. And who is it? Oh, it's Melo Fonwu again getting burned in coverage. Yeah, we hit him a little bit, but he was already burned. Why is Melo? I need to cut Melo Fonwu. I can't with him anymore, as it looks like they are just going to spike it. 35 seconds left, no timeouts. It's now Max Melton and Louis Cine will come in instead. So that should maybe help us out a little bit. Yeah, there he is. Max Melton out of Rutgers. Baker, we're going to roll with him instead. Sitting like a QB spy look as they do throw across the middle. T. Higgins makes the grab, but staying in bounds is going to burn a lot of time. That actually didn't take much time off the clock at all as it looks like they're going to check to a spike. 15 seconds left. Can they get the snap off? And they do. I think, as they let a lot of time drain off the clock here. Nine seconds left. So this hopefully should be it. We're going to roll with Abdul Carter. I'm going to run across and is out to the outside. And a fantastic catch from Higgins. But that's going to be the game 9-20. to 20. Our defense played an absolute complete game today across the board. Even with C.J. Gardner-Johnson out, the secondary stepped up. The Bengals tried to lean on their strength this season, which is the running game. But this, our front four stepped up. Yes, they had some successful runs, but I would say they've had they had no major runs. I think their biggest run was 13 yards by Quentin Johnson in the beginning of the game when Jabril Peppers made that tackle. But I... Am so happy with how our team played. No turnovers from Bo Nix as well. 70% completion percentage. As we didn't allow a pass over 25 to also be completed. That one was to Melifon. Well, no shocker there. Running the ball, though, struggled a little bit. Good break run at the end by Donovan Edwards. But this is the split I want to see going forward in terms of carries. As Harrison got one at 27. Jawan Johnson getting involved. Del Mario Douglas, one catch. And one drop, Bringstool with the one drop, and Slayton with the one. Actually, I don't even think he got a drop. I think that's it. But we're going to walk away here with a win. But that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for understanding the delay. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one.